Hello everyone, welcome back to another Big Finish Fans. In today's Big Finish Fans, we'll be taking a look at Dalek Universe number two, one of the latest releases. How very exciting. Yeah. And doing a 10th Doctor tier list of his Big Finish stories so far. And once again, joined by the tier list king, Luke. Hello everyone. And of course, we've had some news drop today about series 13, which I'm sure we'll get on to in a minute. Um, yeah. but while we wait for a few people to join, let's just do our usual ramble about what we've been up to. So, Luke, what have you been up to? Uh, just before this, actually, I think yeah, about an hour ago now, I finally finished Scourge of the Cybermen. Put a nice little bow on that. Seven and a half hour epic. So that was quite the experience. I mean, was it a satisfying end? I mean, I've just finished, um, you know, part, I think, yeah, part three. Uh, oh, right. no, part four, left, part four, oh, part, part, four, four yeah. part four, that's it. I'm confused where we are. Yeah, I was thinking you got a bit beyond that, but yeah, I'd say it's a worthy end. Certainly some creepy moments in there. It's sort of one of those things where you think back to how it all started and just think how far it's come as a story and how much has changed for these characters. It's one of those ones that feels like an ordeal that they've been put through. It really does. And there's, so, there's so much going on. Like you've got the, the Cybermen in there, the, the radiation sort of stuff in there. There's so much peril. Yeah. Um, they don't seem to get a bit of a, a respite from it all, really. But yeah, it's a, it's a good one from what I've listened to. I mean, I've got another probably two hours left of it. Yeah, it cranks it up a bit in those final two hours, definitely. I feel like it drooped a bit for me in part four. And then picked itself right back up again after that. Well, you get that. You have that great ending to to part four, that revelation, which yeah. I really like. Yeah, that was a good way to end the episode. I think yeah, some strong cliffhangers throughout, really. Not always your typical cliffhangers, but all good ones, I'd say. Yeah, yeah, I'd say they're pretty memorable in in their own right, really. Yeah. Yeah. I've been enjoying that as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't know. Maybe tempted by the next one, the Adric one. I don't know. I was... Oh, you were on the fence about that. You were on the fence yeah. about the old Adric Watcher one. Yeah, I suppose maybe see what the um previews like there. Yeah, get the the little uh, trailer clip, and you'll be fine. See how that goes. See how that is. Yeah, but I don't know. still yeah still on the fence. But now I think having listened to one seven and a half hour story. I'm sort of in the mood for something else of that style, and there's not really going to be much else for a while other than that. So, I mean, I Maybe guess you was... could get a Vajago and Lightfoot series 14. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's could true. get that to, to pass the time. Yeah, we'll see. But, and other than that, not really too much. How about you? Um, I've sort of gone away from Doctor Who for a little bit. I, yeah. I mean, this is kind of a bit unintentional, but it kind of mixes with the recent news. Um, I've started watching that Game of Thrones, haven't I? Um, ah, I see. Which I've got to be honest, it's quite addictive. It's very, very binge worthy. Um, <laughs> I mean, it was recommended by somebody in the chat, Geeky Jess. He recommended it to me on like a past live stream. Finally gave it a go, and uh, it's definitely worth the hype. Definitely worth the hype with all the sort of conspiracy, who's going to take the Iron Throne and all that sort of... It's all, it's all very cool. I'm really enjoying it. And now we've got the, the news of somebody in it, um, I think Grey Worm, is going to be in Series 13. So that's pretty, uh, pretty topical, really, to... Yeah, Jacob Anderson, the actor's name. Yeah, which is which is pretty cool. I mean, I think I'm on series six. I've got another two series left of it, but I know the last series is meant to be pretty. Yeah, crap. I've heard it starts um, so... downhill after six or so. Bad. So I'll have to see how bad that ending is. But so far, yeah. it, it's it's some fine television, especially like the first four series. They're they're very good. Uh, how yeah, how long ago did you start that? I started quite a lot to get through in two weeks. Two weeks. Oh, that, yeah. So, so uh, three just, episodes a day is that? I think so. Yeah. There's, oh, I mean, wow. it's been the hot weather as well. I'm like, I just, I, I don't really want to be outside. I don't want to melt. Yeah. And just become. Yeah. Um, so I've just been enjoying that. Um, it's 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 addictive. It's addictive with all the sort of political conspiracy thriller stuff. It's great. Um, it's always good to find something new to latch onto, isn't it? And just. Be able yeah. to keep going through. 
And I think it, it's good to have a bit of break from from Doctor Who because when you go back to it, you come to it with a fresh like Dalek Universe. I was busy yes. watching Game of Thrones and then started Dalek Universe. It was nice to jump back into the world of the Doctor where it isn't quite as violent as Game of Thrones. No, thankfully, thankfully. Maybe the yeah, odd story, but yeah, I mean, you don't see people getting like assassinated and their throats cut in every episode, but you know, that's Game of Thrones. Nah. I will, uh... yeah, maybe Torchwood if you want something more along those lines. Yeah, yeah, I'd say it's on on the lines of Torchwood violence, maybe a little bit more. Yeah, so, more gratuitous, more gratuitous, maybe more budget to make it look effective, I suppose. Well, it's definitely got the budget. It's like HBO, and they've got all the money, so they can yeah. they can do whatever they want, really. Um, but yeah, that's, yeah, that's I'm what looking, I've been doing. Yeah, I'm looking forward to their um, the Last of Us, the TV series they're doing, adapting that. That that's something I'm quite excited for from them because that's also by the um, I think like the showrunner is was the showrunner of Chernobyl, and that was another. Oh yeah, solid... Chernobyl was good. Chernobyl was yeah. fantastic. Isn't Stephen Moffat doing something for HBO? I think isn't it the Time Traveler's Wife? Uh, yeah, that should be quite cool. That should be a good thing. Yeah, that's very much up his alley. Oh yeah, River Song was the whole inspiration. Well, yeah, River Song was inspired by the Time Traveler's Wife, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, he gets to go do the original, doesn't he? Yeah, I mean he's done Dracula now. He's done Sherlock, so I guess he's moving on. Yeah, moving away from the BBC. Bigger and better yeah. things for him now. Yeah, he's done his target book. He's done the day of the doctor. He's like, well, I'm going to do something else now. So, yeah, that's pretty yeah. Cool. He did all those, uh, what was like lockdown specials? And that feels like so long ago now. But I think, didn't he write some short stories for that or something? Yeah, he, he did um, quite a few actually, because they picked quite a few of his stories to do in the watch along. So, that was it was nice to have Moffat um, still doing some Who stuff. Yeah, I think he said like this was his final, final one now, whatever one that was. I can't yeah, remember, but yeah. you never know. He'll do Big Finish. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they've got oh. Russell involved in Big Finish, haven't they? So, I'm sure Moffat's got plenty of ideas in his head. I'm sure he can he can do it. Yeah, I know he's attached to um, the Paternoster game, but I'm not sure how much. Yeah, because they had to get a special license for the Paternoster gang, didn't they? Yeah, something like that. It's a strange one. I assume there must have been discussions of a TV spin-off at one point that never went through. Yeah, I think it was between that and Class, wasn't it? The spin-offs. Ah, uh, they chose the wrong one, didn't they? <laughs> well, I guess. I mean, I haven't seen all of Class, so I can't properly judge it, but yeah, it wasn't my cup of tea. No, it feels like a fever dream now, looking back on that. What's that, five years ago? Five years yeah. ago since class? That's that's mental. Well, that no, four mental? is... Oh, no, it's five, because it was 16 when we had the gap between... Yeah. Uh, that just makes you feel really old. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's move on from that. <laughs> right, Series 13. Let's move on to some brand new stuff. Uh, yeah. we've, we've had the whole San Diego Comic-Con at home panel. Um, this is very fresh news. I mean, very fresh for us, because it's, what, two hours and a bit? Old. Yeah, think... um, we got a bit of news from Chibnall and the and the the new fam of what to expect for series thirteen, and we've got an image to get excited about and yeah. a little two teaser, images, right? Was it two? Im- oh yes, of the yeah, of, that's the um, one of the yeah, yeah, that's it. Um, yeah, so that's pretty pretty exciting stuff, and we've got our first little gl- proper glimpse at series thirteen in that little teaser trailer. So. What did you make of all that sort of thing? Were you expecting much from it or, you know, are you satisfied with what you got from it? I sort of forgot it was happening until yesterday when I saw people talking about it, really. It's just sort of, I don't know. I suppose I've drifted away from the current iteration of Doctor Who, really. But, Mm. I mean, I'm hopeful for it. The news about it being one long story, in a way, rather than them being completely separate episodes, that excites me. That's something different. That's something that I think it's past time they tried doing again. Well, I so, think if you look at the shows like what Disney are doing with like The Mandalorian, that's eight episodes as well. And that's yeah. sort of one continuous flowing thing. So I think that maybe Chibnall's been inspired by 
the the streaming platforms and i think that it's it's the thing what's made me most excited for from the news we've got today yeah um, it's just something soundtrack. different isn't it and also it's it's the way tv in general seems to be going like dalek universe as well with big finish it's sort of these types of events that really do get people's attention so hopefully that can help in that sense because doctor who for a long while now has felt like it's lagging behind the rest of tv really but yeah other than that trailer didn't do much for me like it doesn't give you any context for anything mm. like it never it doesn't properly introduce you to dan or new character vinda it just sort of it's just shows, um, yeah it's, it's constantly just like wow <laughs> yeah it's I mean, just that like, some okay. impressive visuals but you don't know where they are what planets they're on what type of stories it's going to be telling it just gives you nothing other than just brief visuals and quotes really there's not there's not much yeah. to get excited over no i know it's still early days but i would have liked maybe just the odd monster in there like a little teaser oh, like the cyberman at the end of the ninth doctor adventure trailer just something like that like a little jump scare of a certain villain if you don't yeah. know i'm not going to spoil it if yeah. you don't know yeah I think it, we it know there are something. some from yeah filming leaks we won't say what but it's pretty widespread over the internet what that at least a couple of them are coming they did also say in the panel that some older monsters will be making a reappearance so yeah it's just like we know you've got more why can't you give us a bit more yeah and also surely it's not going to be that long away because certainly it's this year we're in we're nearing the end of july now Mm. it must be around october time like they didn't they couldn't even give us a rough date, like at least for a month for us or something. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it's going to be the autumn time, isn't it? It's going to be September, October time, I think people are suggesting. Um, which yeah. would make sense because I think Series 11 was the start of October as well. Um, and we don't know if we've got yeah. like, if we've got, um, a special episode at all um yeah i don't think they mentioned anything about that did they no um because there's a whole sort of hoo-ha about whether the special is going to become part of like um we're going to get two special episodes next year to make up for for it so we're going to lose the new year special and then have like a jody regeneration sort of a bit like the 2009 special so that hasn't been confirmed that's just all speculation on fan fan half really yeah, like I think some articles in the Daily Mirror or something, wasn't it? Whose leaks seem to be on track so far, but... Yeah, well, yeah, that... they leaked yeah. the, the Timeless Children thing, and we all sort of scoffed at that, going, that will never be true, and it was true. Yeah, so it was, we'll see how that goes down. I mean, BBC haven't commented on it either way yet, so... Well, yeah, they haven't yeah. said if Jodie's staying or going. I mean, I think people were probably expecting her to go, this is my last series. Um, so I was sort of half expecting some sort of big, grand um, sort of reveal in that sense. Yeah, that'd be weird because then that would mean the anniversary year will also be the first year of a new Doctor, most likely. I mean, that'd, be, that'd be a bold start, wouldn't it? yeah. I suppose you'd have to get some series in before you do your special. Presumably, they're going to be doing something special there, but presumably, yeah. I mean, you think there are some specials, but again, it's just all fans just going. Well, it's an anniversary, so there will be an anniversary special. Yeah, that's, that's just how we see it now, isn't it? Yeah, we see a Why big number it? and go anniversary. Yeah, I mean, the twenty fifth anniversary didn't have any returning doctors or anything, so. No, we didn't actually. Yeah, we didn't. Yeah. It's we sort of had specials in the. I mean, Silver Nemesis was the official one, but I think we all look at Remembrance as the anniversary, 25th anniversary special. Yeah, Silver Remembrance Nemesis. The Daleks. Yeah, Silver Nemesis is your sort of poor man's Remembrance of the Daleks, isn't it? Yeah. Um, yeah. Let's have a quick look at the chat quickly. Um, I've had too many pints. I haven't drunk today. I haven't had any pints. Only pints of water this end. <laughs> um, Always good to stay hydrated. Got to stay hydrated in this heat wave. Um, probably trying to decipher the trailer. 
um, because there's a hid- hidden website thing in it. Is that okay? Yeah. I didn't Ooh. know there was a hidden website in the trailer. I'll have to do yes. a bit of investigating for that. Yeah, strange. We'll look on Twitter and find where someone else has already deciphered it. And then take the glory going, look what we found. <laughs> <laughs> nah. Um, uh, what else we got? Uh, series 13 is going to be one whole story. Yeah, it, I guess it's going to be your new trial of a time, Lord, I guess. Or key to time. I guess it would be yeah. a bit equivalent to that one big adventure. Um, was it around sh- Trial of a Time Lord that we had Chris Chibnall's infamous video now? Yes, was it, it was. after or before that? When it was he talking about Trial or season twenty two? And he was saying, "I don't think it was very good." He was talking about Terror of the Vervoids. Oh, oh yeah, because it was Pippa, yeah, Pippa Jane Baker. So yeah. there oh, we wow. go. Um, what are people's thoughts on Vinda? Um, he looks all right, doesn't he? He looks pretty cool. Um, yeah. okay, not much to go off to get excited either way, to be honest. I mean, how's I mean, the actor in Game of Thrones? I mean, just sort very... of hearing that an actor from Game of Thrones is all sort of, you think high caliber there. So, I mean, that's a thing. I mean, when you're watching Game of Thrones, you kind of spot, oh, they're in Doctor Who. Um, yeah. but he's very good because he plays um, an unsullied, which is basically this soldier character. Um, yeah. And he's he's getting a fair bit more to do than fighting in the se- uh, season I'm watching now. Um, so he's he's a good good performer. I do like him. He's he's a good, definitely a good actor. So it'll be interesting yeah. to see because the role seems completely different to what he played in Game of Thrones. So I guess it shows that he's quite versatile um, yeah. as a performer. Yeah. I just thought we're looping back round to um, what was it series nine now when we had Maisie Williams coming in from. Gosh, Game of Thrones. Yeah. Like they were hyping that up a lot. I mean, May- I mean, Maisie Williams' character is probably more of a bigger part of Game of Thrones than Vinda's person. Yeah. Um, but yeah, from that image, isn't the the one of Dan and the Thirteenth Doctor and Yaz got like some sort of symbol, and people are saying that's like the uh, Seal of Rassilon. Oh, is it? All right, so that's the picture of Vinda. That's got a symbol there. I can't. Because Vinda does look a bit like, um, I think James said, a bit of a glitz-like character. Yeah. Be quite nice, yeah. a bit of a Del Boy character. Yeah, I don't... Uh... Oh, yeah, that like, stood on something that could very well be the Seal of Rassilon. Yeah, so it could be. Could be on Gallifrey, could be part of... What was that thing um, Gat was a part of? Was it the Divergence? Um, Division. Division, that's it. So could Vinda be part of that? I don't know. Could he be a Time Lord? Yeah, maybe. Because there's that line in the trailer of what what's the 13th Doctor hiding, so we're going to get a bit more of a darker 13th Doctor, which would be nice. Hmm. It pretty much seems like a repeat of Series 12, though. Yeah, maybe. I feel like it feels like she might have said that exact same line in Series 12, but... Oh, we'll just have to wait yeah. and see about that. Yeah. I mean, I will admit Yaz seems... Like more exciting in this trailer for some reason. Well, I hope that series thirteen does give Yaz some something to do, something to shine. Um, yeah, some, with because I was kind of hoping for series thirteen that it was just Yaz and the thirteenth Doctor maybe get at least two episodes of just those two. Then introduce Dan because I feel like Dan is sort of a carbon copy of Graham at this point. Because I think Bradley Walsh was going to do series thirteen. Oh. And then he just, I mean, you've just got to look at the ending of Revolution of the Daleks of how great oh, yeah, like very I'm leaving Ryan focus, isn't it? Yeah, and it doesn't really focus on Graham, so it kind of makes you feel like Dan was supposedly Graham was going to carry on. Um, yeah. so I guess we're just Bradley retiring from TV in general now. I think he's he's meant to be hanging up doing the chase, isn't he? So yeah, he's he's it. but I think he said he's like retiring from TV work as a whole. I mean, maybe he's going to carry on with his singing career. Uh, I don't know. What else we got on the chat? Ben looking pretty handsome. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, Uh, Rewatched one of your old collection videos where you got the Dimension Cannon. I was wondering what you preferred, Rose Tyler with a Dimension Cannon or Donna Noble Kidnapped? Um, You've listened to Rose Tyler's Dimension Cannon, haven't you, Luke? Uh, I haven't, no. Oh, you haven't? I thought you had it. No, I didn't get that. No. 
I think I wanted it for a while, and then it sort of came out, and I just never got round to it. I swear you had it. I swear you got that no. box set. No, I never um, put that one I think something else came out around the same time that I ended up picking up instead, but I can't remember what. Okay. Um, to answer your question, I think they're very different series. Dimension Cannon's more bleak, um, and it's got Clive in, so it's naturally god tier because it's got Clive in. Mm. Um, but I think Don and Noble Kidnap's just a lot of fun. But I think in terms of your story, I think Dimension Cannon's probably probably a more satisfying um listen but i think don and noble kidnap if you just want to have four hours of fun have that it's just a it's a feel-good audio don and noble kidnapped yeah. um, i'm gonna be completing the trilogy soon there with with martha Donna, yeah martha and yeah rose i guess we can but... talk a little bit about martha quickly about that news one yeah, of the finishes but... worst kept secrets um yeah, i it's... think we've known for at least two years about the martha spin-off yeah i think there's been like um, what is it? Listings on people's um, agent site or whatever. I can't remember what. There's like some website. Yeah, with Spotlight. Ah, yeah. Oh, yeah, Spotlight. That's it. I think some leaks happened on there that there was a Martha Jones set in the works. And obviously, we had her back in for um, the Torchwoods dissected. And so we knew we were going to get more of her sooner or later. It was just a question of how long it would take. And now we finally got the news. Is it a pickup for you? Are you going to pick it up? December is a busy month looking at it. So, yeah, because we've got like War Doctor, haven't we? Yeah. Um, Stranded. Stranded, yeah. Gosh, yeah. Robots Free. Uh, I'm also tempted by that um, Babe and the Butcher, the Blake Seven thing with Colin Baker. So. I mean, it does seem like a an in, it does seem like a thing Big Finish should tackle, you know, the the year that never was, because um, we did have that new series book um, documenting Martha's um, travel with year without the Doctor and trying to find that um, the chemicals to kill a type and kill the Master. So it'd be interesting to see if John Sim has an appearance in it. That would be quite cool. I think that would yeah, be a nice selling we got, factor. We've got Martha's mum in there, so we know. It presumably cuts back to some scenes on the Valiant there, where she's imprisoned for that year. Hello. I mean, you hope so. I think having John Sim would just really sort of um, flesh it out, really. Yeah. I mean, certainly the Master will have a presence in the story either way, just because he's the one ruling Earth at this point. Presumably going to have Toclophane back too. I don't, did Nick do the voice for them at the time? No, he would. No, no I don't think not he did. Voice. Think he did. It's like a child voice, isn't it? I think there's a. I think it was a fem- Must have been an a female actress who did the voice. I think there. it's a mix, isn't it, of a male and female? Oh yeah, there's a couple of them, isn't there? Uh, yeah, let's look up. Last um, of time. I mean, I hope David Tennant's got a little cameo in it. That'd be quite nice. Yeah, he had one in um. Donna, didn't they? Yeah, the cameo in Donna, so I think it'd be quite and Jenny as well. He did appear in Jenny. Um, I guess that's a bit of a spoiler. Ah. Um but yeah, I'd I'd like to see Tennant in it, since you know, Tennant's doing a fair bit now for Big Finish. Yeah, yes. And I mean with all the home recording, you can easily just stick on his microphone for about ten minutes and get a cameo recorded easily. Well, it's like when he recorded um I think Dalek Universe four i think but i think he was filming doctor who at the time and he literally did like an answer phone message and recorded his line through that ah. um so he just did it on the telephone line so it just shows the dedication of, of david tennant there mm. yeah and he's had cameos elsewhere too actually going to treat maybe they just have a gonna get a studio day with just david tennant recording hundreds of little cameos and other things <laughs> Yeah, I mean, yeah, Who that'd knows? be quite nice. That'd be quite yeah. cool to have a little cameo in of David Tennant and everything. But yeah, yeah, just wrap. He's like the um Easter egg, the RTD Easter egg to watch out for. How he had Rose popping up throughout series four, just have David Tennant pop up somewhere in every single big finish production. Oh, that'd be good, wouldn't it? <laughs> I mean, I'd buy it all. Not that I don't buy it all already, but I'd definitely, definitely buy it. But yeah, I think a cameo in Year of Martha. 
is certainly something that's not outside the realms of possibility. Is that is that us done with Martha? Is there anything else you want to add about Martha? Uh, good selection of writers. Looking at it, James Goss and Tim Foley, Matt Fitton, but yeah, James yeah. Goss and Tim Foley, big fan of their work. Yeah, so yeah, Tim Foley especially recently, he's done a few good things like the golf, mm. the third Doctor. So yeah, it'd be exciting. Absolutely. I think. Yeah, I would like to see more of Martha post um, what's end of time because I feel like that's out of the companion. She's the one who didn't get her story like tied up neatly. Oh, so like, sort of after tortured sort of vibe then. Yeah, sort of see because I think there's much more room to expand with her going forward. Whereas with Rose or Donna, all that stuff has to be set during their time with the Doctor or for Rose, like before Journey's End. I think with Martha, there certainly is room to explore more of her life later on at some point. I mean, maybe get her involved in, you know, Kate Stewart and Osgood unit, maybe. Yeah, that's true. That could always be an option. That'd be a good little thing. I mean, I would quite like to see more um, Donna and Martha and Tenth Doctor adventures. Yeah, that'd um, be good. I'd quite like to see a bit more of that pairing, to be honest. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, I mean, David's recording so much, but you never know what could be in the pipeline. I They've mean, got yeah. doing a Tom Baker, haven't they? They <laughs> probably have. Like, They've uh... probably got him. Well, I mean, if there is another lockdown, then Big Finish can be like, right, get those David scripts in. Let's get him recording. Because um, mm. I guess he's busy filming Good Omens soon. So I guess that he isn't going to be able to, to record any Big Finish show. We best enjoy what better David Tennant we've got, unless there are a mountain load yet to be released. Yeah, I feel like they must have stockpiled a couple more. I think we're going to have some more surprises in store. I hope so. I, re- I mean, that's one thing what I'm really yearning for. I'm yearning for the next like big, massive news announcement. Yeah. Um, you know, we've had sort of the rebrand of Big Finish for next year, which is exciting, but we can't properly get excited about it because. We don't really know much about it. We can only yeah, speculate. We'll still wait for more details, aren't we? But yeah, I think. Yeah, it'd be interesting to see how the new doc- new series doctors work and that if they're going to carry on as they are, pretty much just box sets whenever they can get them out, or if there's going to be something more structured weaving in with the classic series ones. Yeah, because I, I guess Dalek Universe fits into that sort of rebrand, doesn't it? In the yeah, it's always the prototype run in a way. And uh, I guess we'll talk about that more in a, in a minute. Um, yeah, yeah, we sort of drifted on to Tenant before we've even started the tier list. This is this oh, yeah. is how we roll here. We, yeah. we ramble. We ramble. It's on. a good topic to talk about. Old, oh, yeah. absolutely. Uh, yeah. Did you see Twitter? Mark Gatiss found an old Doctor script. Remember what happened last time a Doctor writer associated with Big Finish found an old script? Yeah, I did see that photo actually. So maybe Big oh. Finish are gonna adapt that. I think it's a Six Doctor and Perry story. So we what? got maybe Collins have... being blessed, isn't he? Yeah, maybe we're gonna get like um a little bundle of the mind of the Hodiac and Mark Gatiss's script. That'd be quite cool. Yeah, uh, that's a. Uh... Yeah, where is? Uh, I can't quite find it at the moment. Just so. Sort of... I'll just I'll, while you find that I'll uh, read another comment. I'll go for it. Uh, Monster of the Week style television seems to be almost completely dead. It's Doctor evolving and changing with the times. That's true. That is true because I think audiences want to be invested in weekly storytelling. They want a through line, and I think that it's a good way of doing it. I think that's mm. what we've learned really with television, the way it's changed. And hopefully that can mean more character arcs as well, and actual development for them. If like the story's going on through, we can have it built around them a bit more. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it gives us chance. I guess like Dalek Universe to have a sort of a, a story arc, but still able to tell the character dramas and character piece, you know, stories. Um, especially for for Dan, um, who we'd like to learn more about because he John Bishop's just seems like a really lovely guy. And he seems to just have a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully that comes across um, on screen when we watch it. Yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, indeed. Uh, da, da, da. Imagine the backlash if the BBC would face uh, would face if they didn't make a sixth year special. 
yeah, there'd be a fair bit of backlash, really, but you just have to see if there is. I mean, there, there's talks of um, not like an anniversary special, but doing a series of episodes with old doctors. So, yeah, whether or not that would lead into a like crossover at the end or so, similar to um, things like Sirens of Time and End of the Beginning. It seems but very a full, full series. Um, Titan comic. If they did that, like Supremacy of Cybermen or um, whatever ones they yeah. did, was it the Lost Dimension? That big multi crossover one they did a few yeah. years back. How many doctors would they be able to get involved if it was to be like a proper TV one? So, I mean, give Joe Martin her own episode, probably David Bradley as well. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, you could yeah. get David Bradley. Um, Paul yeah. McGann's definite one I'd like to see. Yeah, Eccleston question mark. I'd like to, I mean, I'd like to see Eccleston. Yeah. That would be a real know. treat for us. Um, I, mean, I mean, he's doing big finish now, so we can only hope. Yeah. Tenant's a foregone conclusion, but he's probably already cleared his schedule for 2023, <laughs> saying, oh, don't book me in for work then. They're going to get me for the Doctor Who 60th. I mean, I think because he's such a fan, he knows that it's expected of him. And he yeah. doesn't want to let people down, and you know I'm I'm all for that really. I mean Matt yeah. Smith, I'd like to see come back. Yeah, um, that's what he's up because to. because we haven't seen him in any expanded media since he left. So I think it'd be a real treat seeing him return. Mm. And I suppose because he did the 50th, so he sort of there was probably some just discussion with David about them doing the 60th together at some point, wasn't there? Yeah, because I, I remember, um, I think Wales Comic Con, he did like a Q&A with David Tennant and he said that he'd be down for doing like Christmas specials because that's one thing he misses being on like the Radio Time front cover and being on telly at Christmas Day. Oh. So maybe we could get like, you know, alternate each Doctor for a Christmas special. That'd be quite nice. Hmm. I mean, if we get the Christmas slot back. Oh, Chibnall. Very nice. Uh what else have we got? Uh, the panel's only been up for about two and a half hours and already seen people speculating and theorising um, and speculating who Vinda could be working for the division. Well, yeah, we even, you even said something about that. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. Um, Jacob was in Broadchurch, apparently. Anyone remember him? Oh. I, I don't remember him being in Broadchurch. I, I can't remember him at all. I uh, can't think I've seen Jacob before. Well, Game of Thrones is probably the big thing he's memorable for. Uh, chances of a tenant cameo in Jenny too, since it was likely recorded remotely, so it makes sense. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I want. Does she use the same little recording booth under their stairs? I think she was in studio for Jenny series oh, two, wasn't wow. she? Yeah, I think man. from the photos they put online, it looked like she was back in the in the studio, wasn't it? For recording that, yeah, unless that's like, yeah, like the photos her like in a garden or something. Unless that's one they had from a while back. Because I think from or her Instagram, she about. put. I think she put some photos on her Instagram. Oh she, yeah, she leaked it, didn't she? So I think yeah, she was, she's definitely in studio recording that. Yeah, she's keeping up the trend with the. How weird would that be? Like going to work and then having David, your husband, recording at home while you're in the studio. Oh, she got the short end of the I mean, she might be blessed because like I don't have to look after the kids today. So yeah. maybe. Yeah. I suppose also it I think Christopher Eccleston said about this as well during his interview. During lockdown, it's just nice to be able to get out and go on that commute to work to the studio. Even if there's not many people there, it's still nice to have that experience of just getting out of the house, isn't it? Yeah, you're not confined into four walls. Yeah. More tenant, I'm down for that. Yep, yep, definitely down Aren't for more tenant. <laughs> we yeah. all love a bit of tenant. Um, Colin's getting the love he deserves. Woo. Yeah, we love a bit of good old Colin. We love a bit of Colin here. Yeah, I suppose when tenant was first doing Big Finish. But I think it wasn't just the fact that he was busy, but also Catherine and Billy were also quite busy. So they were waiting for the schedules to align. Whereas now that Tennant's properly in big finish and doing more stuff on his own, maybe they'd be able to just, he'd be happy to come in and do stuff by himself more often. I mean, than... Dalek. Yeah, I think yeah. Dalek Universe shows that really. really. And I guess, classic I guess classic companions sort of 
played into Tennant in a fanboy going, oh my God, I'm doing a story with Leela. Um, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. Is... Tennant's very much got all like the fanboy moments. And then Chris has got like this, <laughs> the more serious stuff, I suppose. Like the more I... new boundary pushing stuff in a way. I guess I just want to keep Chris on board, isn't it? I think yeah. as soon as Chris has sort of got what, I think they're trying to keep Chris on board and keep him happy. And then I think as soon as they've done, you know, like um, the Macbeth stuff, they've done that. Um, yeah. And then get him properly down the rabbit hole. Yeah. And then, you know, we're, we're getting little little bits of the rabbit hole, like the Cybermen and the Brigadier. But yeah, it'd be nice to go full on, like throw him into like, the ninth doctor and the chumblies like come on yeah. let's let's have some obscure stuff for the ninth doctor yeah i suppose with tenant himself being a fanboy as well and just his doctor in general being a bit more lighter i feel like he suits more of that like fan crossover stuff doesn't he in a way okay. whereas eccleston feels it feels more right to have him not be 100 percent embedded in that world just yet i mean i think because of, as well in tenant's era he had score reunion so yeah. I feel like there's a natural complacency with Tennant revisiting old companions, you know, mm. and sort of Sarah Jane becoming quite a regular in the RTD era with Stolen Earth and then the wedding of Sarah Jane. So I think, you know. Yeah, that's true. Just sort of play into that, I guess. There, yeah, there's a precedence set, isn't there? Uh, what else we got? Big Finish really needs to give the people what they want. Ninth Doctor Chronicles Volume 2. No, I really don't. <laughs> I, can, I can stay in the bin. Love you, Big Finish, but no thank you. Not today. What's going on here then? Oh, it just sounds oh like no, it's not. Bit. It's um. Hey, what's going on around here? That's the one. Oh, God. And then he returned for the Dalek um, target book, which is pretty terrifying. Yeah. So, do you think... Cause... Obviously, they skipped redoing 9 and 10 and went straight to 11th Doctor volume mm. 2. And that's not even got any narration in it. Treat now do any more, like 12 maybe without narration? I wouldn't mind 12 and, you know, carrying on with the 11th Doctor. But I think 9th Doctor and 10th Doctor just don't make any sense. I always found the 10th no. Doctor Chronicles so bizarre that we have David Tennant. Why... You know, this is no disrespect to the Chronicles because I'm I'm a big fan of you know the Chronicles range like the Companion Chronicles, but for me, it just didn't make sense. You know, you've got David Tennant, can't you just mm. save those stories to get David in studio? Um, you know, yeah, that's true. Like Lady Christina, why couldn't we just have had like a Tenth Doctor and Lady Christina box set? Yeah, like surely he'd have wanted to work with Michelle again. Unless Planet of the Dead was a terrible experience. I don't know. Who knows? Uh, will you ever get the countermeasures spin off um, since they're going out of print and most likely be on sale? I mean, if they're on sale, I might pick them up. The Yeti one has intrigued me for some time. I mean, you've picked oh, up yeah. a few countermeasures, haven't you? So, do you want to give your thoughts on countermeasures? Uh, yeah, what ones? I got the um, Who Killed Tobias Kinsella, like the two part special. And then I got Series One. I skipped out on Series Two, but ended up getting Hollow Crown. Um, what is it? Mavella Maneuver and Dalek Gambit, like the series three, as it were. But I think it's a all right range, but nothing too special, really. Like nothing I'm in a rush to go back to. I mean, from what I've listened to the countermeasure stuff, I just don't seem to to enjoy it. I listened to, uh, I think it's the Assassination Games, the 1963 story. Ah, uh, yeah. I can't seem to just get get into that range, so I I don't know. I mean, I've got one of the three stories. I think the threshold, isn't it? Oh um, yeah, so, that's like the very first one they did, isn't it? So maybe I should give that a listen, and then if I like it, I might um, pick them up. But the countermeasures don't aren't really a, a high priority for me at this this current moment in time. No, I don't think you'd be missing out on much if you didn't go for it. To be honest. I mean, there's so much new stuff, which is exciting. Um, it's it's hard to go back and revisit some of the old stuff, really. Yeah. It's sort of like the lesser Jago and Lightfoot, in a way, isn't it? Because those were the big two spin-offs, I suppose, yeah. original ones at that time. And uh, I know where my loyalty lies, <laughs> Jago and yeah. Lightfoot. Hmm. Uh, do you think Big Fish might do another series with Chris, um, or do you think uh, we'll get 
once we get two and four, that'll be a one-off series. Um, I'd like there to be more, but there's a part of me just thinking that's it. We've had our big yeah. for Chris Eccleston. Um, I mean, I'd like more because he was my first doctor, so I've got quite an attachment to him. He certainly so. seems to be enjoying his time with it, but you know, I don't want to like get my hopes up too high that there'll be more. And we're only three out of 12 into his current run at the moment. So we've got a lot more to enjoy first before we start worrying that this is it. I mean, I guess it will make us cherish those four box sets if this is the only Christopher Eccleston big finish we get. Because, you know, it's like the, the, the John Hurt stuff. We didn't think we'd get John Hurt on big finish, but we cherish those stories because we actually have them. Yeah, um, so I think it makes us probably appreciate things a little bit more, really. Yeah, that's very true. Uh, which doctors do you think will be in the Paladin box set? I'm hoping for David Chris, but I would love to see a War Doctor story set on Paladin one day. Um, wasn't it kind of leaked through the collected paper? Like the um, yeah. wasn't it? I'm I not think sure. I, um, you how much I... you want to say about that. Yeah, I think I messaged you about that, didn't I? About is it yeah. isn't it the sixth doctor, tenth doctor's on there, isn't he? Yeah, eighth and third. But then you never know how much of that is due to those doctors actually being in there, or it being just because it's con something connected to their errors. Like I think the it would doctor, it is yeah. in the third doctor one anyway, but that ju could just be because that's where Peladon originates and does it. That's the only place it's appeared on TV. I mean, I would like Chris to be in the Peladon box set because, you know, I can see him leading the, the miners, doing a miners Oh, strike. that's very true. But, yeah, I think that's it. Um, your idea of the classic Doctors returning for the 60th sounds great, um, but it's missing one integral Doctor. We all want on screen Doctor Ogron. Yes, get oh, him on yeah. screen. Get him on screen. Get John Coleshaw in the makeup. Please, please do. I'd like to see Dr. Ogron get his own own TV episode. Um, yeah. and, and we've got Dr. Who. Hi, hello. Um, I think we're all caught up on the chat, uh, which is great. Uh, I suppose, on the chat. Um, going back to Peladon quickly, actually, they could always do Time War with the Eighth Doctor, couldn't they? Yeah, that is And it yeah. does have a little cameo in um, The War Master, the um, Anti-Genesis. There's a reference to Peladon. When they go, I can't through, remember that. Yeah. You, you've got a very good memory because I can't yeah. recall that at all. Yeah, it's sort of like while they're going through all the different versions of history as it's changing. There's one where Peladon gets invaded by the Daleks. And... Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm with you now. I'm with you now. Yeah, so we could see something along those lines with Paul McGann. Um, yeah, I mean that'd be quite nice. That'd be quite yeah. cool to see a Time War Paladin story to see how they're they're involved in the Time War in some way. Mm. Maybe maybe sort of get the Galactic Federation in the Time War. That'd be quite nice. Oh, maybe. that'd be an interesting direction to go down. Interesting take. Right, should we, should we get on to Dalek Universe review? Or do you want to do the tier list first? What, what, what takes you fancy? Uh, should we go tier list first? And then like as we're reviewing Dalek Universe 2, we can pop those stories in at the end along with the rest of them. Rightio, I'll load the tier list up. So, do you uh, want to do your little introduction? Because this is your creation. Uh, I don't know. Is there much to say? It is a tier list. You have the different um, what's it called? tiers, as it were. Yeah. I think there's six of them this time. I've cut down a bit since last time because we were a bit spread out. And so, we have each different main, like Doctor Who story tenant has done. I've not included any of the cameos or anything, just the Big Doctor Who brand one. So we've got volumes one to three, River Song, the two out times we've got so far, the two Dark Universes, and also Echoes of Extinction, the um, Time Lord Victorious audio that he did. And I think, can we, yeah, can we all see the tier list? Can we see the tier list? Is it all fine? Uh, make sure yeah, that? I can see it. I think, is there like a, I don't know, down at the bottom, is there like a bigger view or something? or? I think Big of you. Um, yeah, I've you got see it those... on presentation mode. Oh, it is on present. Ah, oh, there you go. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Again, Luke made it. Yeah, There's his you. 
there's his Twitter, so go follow him. And if if you have listened to the Tenth Doctor audios, do your own tier list. We'd be very interested to to yeah, um, throw him in there. Throw him in there. So we've got Alonzi, we've got yeah. brilliant, good, meh, and well, and we've got uh, the old classic. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Um, right, so we've got the first tenant audio, Technophobia, the one to kickstart of a tenth doctor's time on Big yeah. Finish. So, so, make us feel old again because that's um over five years ago. Five years, it's taken us five years to get to a, a series what we've all wanted, Dalek Universe. But yeah, we're jumping yeah. to go. Um, yeah. Technophobia, I think it's a really good story. I enjoyed it, I think. It, it sort of has that partners in crime feel, that sort of contemporary series opener, doesn't it? It feels very mm. evocative of early series four. Um, and I guess maybe a little bit gimmicky of the 10th Doctor, maybe, but I revisited this box set back in April because James ah. started revisiting um, the 10th Doctor stuff. And looking back on it, they nailed Tennant right from the off. Um, you know, I think hindsight is such a wonderful thing and sort of using technology and sort of, I guess, capitalising on tablets and sort of technology and all that sort of thing. Um, it's pretty yeah. interesting. It, was it set in like 2012? I can't remember if they gave an exact date for it, but I think it's meant to be a bit into Donna's future, isn't it? Yeah. Maybe it was meant to be more like 2016, present day for the story. Yeah, I mean, yeah that would ring a bell. Yeah. I mean, I I feel like it's a sort of a tenant equivalent of the Bells of St. John in a way. Ah. Oh. Uh, That's pretty good. Yeah. It is sort of like that reintroduction, isn't it? Because that was very much like a restart for the 11th Doctor in some ways. And so this is sort of like a restart, but just on the audio medium and sort of yeah, getting him involved again. So where would you like to put it? Because I'm thinking between, I think, good and brilliant, I think, for me. Uh, I'm leaning more towards good for this one because I feel for me there was there's obviously that initial rush when first they do it of having Tennant back, but I feel like there's a lot of parts of the story that drag on and sort of don't quite gel as well for me. So I'd say good. Yeah, I think for me it's an eight out of ten. I think that it's a it's uh, a solid it's a solid listen. It's a solid one. Yeah, um, I've just realised something <laughs> kind of scary actually. Go on. Everything up. So everything on there from technophobia up to the creeping death, that was all like done over the space of three years, maybe. And then everything from out of time is less than a year old. Because that was last August. That's that is meant. I mean, yeah. that is one good thing to come out of a global pandemic. All these lovely tenth doctor audios. Yeah, that was just well, I hadn't it's only when you have like a picture so you can really see what you're looking at with that that you realize how much more we've gotten recently and how blessed we've been with tenant coming back that is Full yeah, force, that, a big finish that is a i mean there's still more to come because we've got classic uh companions as well so yeah 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 so time reaver <laughs> all right i'll let i'll let you I'll take just, this away I'll, hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll let you you go uh, I don't have good memories of this one. I'll be. <laughs> this was where it, the set really faltered for me. Okay. And it, it just felt like a messy soundscape with loads of weird running around. And I just struggled to really connect to the story or care about any of the characters. I'm. That's my scathing review of uh... Time Reaver. See, I don't think it's as bad as what people say it is. I quite enjoy it. I think that the Time Reaver is quite a horrifying concept. Um, and Gully is an interesting, strange villain who appeared in a, a, a Tenth Doctor book released around the same time, again, by Jenny T. Colgan. Um, oh, what, the um, blood? Something yeah, like in the blood. Um, I mean, this uh, is the, the glorious thing about this tier list is that we're basically doing it off memory. So we haven't really listened to all of these talent stories just for this. This is just our gut reaction and... I, I love Tennant's end speech about eternity, that he's, um, that, is it about death or something? And he's just like, I'm not going to answer. I like that yeah. sort of foreshadowing in it. But yeah. No, I, I performances are all on top. I think, is it Terry Malloy as um, Gully? No, no. Terry is... Malloy plays, I think, the shop owner. 
Ah, oh, is it? I think in it. Yeah, I knew it was in there somewhere. I think I know where you want to where you want to put it. Where do you want to put it? I see. I would say it's in in good as well. Ah, but I feel like it's going to be meh for you. I'd have even put it in well or I'm sorry, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but... Right. Okay. We're, just because go... I can't really think of any of them that uh, maybe actually one springs to mind, but we'll get to that in a bit. But I can't really think of any that are lesser than that. So I'd compromise on Mare if you want to. Okay, we're going Mare. There. We're, we'll be kind. Yeah. Deafen the Queen by James Goss. I think this was my favourite of box at number one. I think that it was lovely to have more of a comedic story, that sort of fairy tale kingdom, you know, death at the castle and all that sort of stuff. And Donna mm. getting married again and it being a disaster is great. Um I I really love this one. I think that it's a really good story. Um allows Tennant and Tate to show off their more comedic nature again. The No Place is a, another prime example of that. But this for me was a standout of volume one for me personally. Don't know about you. Yeah. I say my favourite from Volume One ended up being Technophobia, really. Okay. Which, I, mean, I haven't even given the most glowing review to that. So the show's looking back on maybe Volume One does need a revisit for me, but looking back, I don't have the most fondest of memories of these three stories. I feel for me it feels very uh, sort of like a poor copy of what Series Four was trying to do in a lot of ways. It, doesn't quite capture that same magic and i think by it feels like it's trying so hard to at the same time where that's one of the things that i really rated about ravagers the um ninth doctor stuff they're doing was that it didn't feel like it was trying to be this copy of series one it was trying to be its own thing Mm. whereas with volume one of 10th doctor it didn't quite catch that same magic and it takes a while with them sometimes like the fourth doctor adventures as well series one of that despite claiming to lean very heavily on the whole it's 19 saturday tea time 1977 all over again you Mm. don't quite catch that same magic until a couple of series in really and some of those they start to drift away from what the core of that era was in some ways and start to make their own magic with stuff from that era and now they have been doing the same with the 10th doctor but yeah, for me, Volume 1 doesn't have the fondest of memories. Maybe it is better than I'm giving it credit for. But for me, Death and the Queen, I remember having some good laughs of it, some great performances in there. But it just fell a bit flat for me. So, where would you like to put it? Are you going full on Alonzi or are you leaning more towards Brilliant? Ooh, hello. I think we may have lost Ben a bit there. He seems to have frozen for me. I'm not sure how far through my um, speech there he went, but yeah, I have just given a scathing review of Volume 1 of the Tenth Doctor Adventures. Let's have a look in the chat, see if anyone has any kind words to say. Uh Uh, shame your tier list doesn't include the tenth Doctor Chron- Oh, this is Jake, by the way. There we go. Uh, yeah, I think it was just focusing on the stuff that David Tennant has appeared in himself, and also just the main big stories because he had. Oh, there we go. Because he has. Uh, what is it? He has made a quite a few cameos actually. But- Thinking off the top of my head, maybe about four or five. They keep David Tennant busy. They keep David Tennant busy over there. A big finish. Uh, but yeah, the covers for the second batch of Tenth Doctor audio are the best besides Dark Universe. I don't, I think they have done a lot of good covers for the Tenth Doctor. Coming to think about it, but, yeah. What is everyone's favourite Tenth Doctor cover in the chat? Pop it down there. Let's see what we have. But yeah, I'd say certainly for me, it would have to be um, what is that? The Trojan Garlic. That is easily my favourite cover from the Tenth Doctor stuff. There is something so rich and exciting about that cover. Plonked straight into the action. And ah, Ben has returned. 
sorry you my internet from... <laughs> my internet died again i am very sorry so all uh, panic stations carry on carry on with uh, me doing your cover talk oh, I'll, load the, I'll load the tear list back up <laughs> yeah i was just having a um gush over the dalek um the trojan dalek cover again and i've asked the chat what their favorite covers are good good i mean what's what's the response been uh none so far <laughs> okay okay right definitely should we put death and the queen on the old tier list then uh yeah let's go for it where yeah i think you cut out before i could ask you if you were leaning more towards alonzi or brilliant with it how, oh it's, how... for me it's a uh, alonzi uh I'll, I'll compromise with you and let you have a brilliant then Okay. All right. I'll 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 take that. I'll, I'll take I'll take that. I'll take yeah, it. Take what you can get. I'll take it. Um, but I've, I will I've get been my revenge. So far. I oh. will get my revenge on uh, Echoes of Extinction. I get to decide where that goes. Uh yeah. Because that out of all of these, that's the only one I haven't heard yet. So Ben gets sole rights on where that gets to be placed. Right. So we have got Volume Two: Infamy of Azaros. We have the invasion of Norwich, the most exotic mm. place in the world. I mean, saying that, volume two is full of exotic stories. Norwich and Slough. Uh, and, uh, and a fridge in and space. A, yeah. <laughs> so, it's, it's very se series two, isn't it? They yeah. have got right down to like that early tenant era stuff. They've got it right there. Jackie is a real highlight. I feel like Camille Kajori just steals it. I think that she is so wonderful in it. Um, yeah, she's definitely lovely. I love um, the fury of Tennant when he's going up against the Zaros as he realizes what their plan is. But it's, I guess, a bit series one esque with sort of that reality TV oh, sort yeah, of thing. It sort of ties into Long Game and Bad Wolf, doesn't it? Yeah, so I, I, it? I, I, to me, I feel that. like. Yeah. I remember them hyping up that twist quite a lot and a lot of us having already predicted where they were going with it from just the cover alone. Mm. Yeah, I think it's yeah, it's a shame that. I don't know well how much blame of that goes to John Dorney, but yeah, it wasn't the most shocking of reveals, to be honest. I think he got his own back though. He managed to pull off a good one with buying time and the wrong woman, but as mm. for this one yeah, I think that overhype there ruined the story a bit for me. And yeah, I, it's another one that I didn't quite get along with. I, oh, I feel like I've been okay. doing nothing but you just do it on everything. Stuff. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it'll change. It'll change. I mean, this is me it's defending. I mean, I think for me, the Tenth Doctor audios—they're just something special because it's my Doctor. What I—I gr I mean, it's your Doctor as well, but you're just crapping on him so i'm forgetting your opinion right now <laughs> there's just something quite special about tenant audios where i'm just like ah i'm 10 years old again that's exciting so i guess nostalgia does play a part and i, I guess i am you know could say i'm listening to them with rose tinted earphones yeah i suppose yeah. for me in some ways nostalgia plays a part in it being tainted because it almost feels like it's playing up to nostalgia too much that it then struggles to compare to what was there originally. If that... Yeah, I, I can see your point. I can see your point. Right. And I guess I guess you can be a little bit critical about the early tenant stuff because if you look at what we're getting now, you know, I guess it's night and day, really. Yeah, I'm going to be much nicer later on, though. Like very soon, this is we going to flip. See. But at the moment, <laughs> at the moment, I am. Yeah, being a bit of a party pooper on Tenant, but his performances throughout have always been great. There's been no faltering there, and I think Billy did a great job returning in this set as well. Uh, but yeah, for me, this wasn't the this was my least favorite of Volume Two. So there you go. You know, it's going to get better. But I think is it your favorite or of uh, no? I think I would say it's the middle for me. Uh, for me, I want to say I want to say it's. It's brilliant, but I feel like it will probably end up in lower than that. No, actually, I'd say it's good. Actually, I'd say it's good. Ah, you're good. I'd, I'd have put good. it in there, so compromise again. I'll let you have the good. Okay. All right. 
Yeah. You, will, you will remember my kindness when we get around to Cold Vengeance. <laughs> no. <laughs> I don't like that. Spoilers. Uh, no, we get, well, I think we both like um, Sword of the Chevalier, don't we? This is my favourite. Yeah, same here. No. This is my favourite. This is this is it reminds me very much of sort of Girl in the Fireplace and Tooth and Claw, which are you know, I think Tooth and Claw is my favourite episode of the series too, so that's always mm. a good sign. Ah. I gave that a rewatch recently, actually. I really enjoyed that. It's a good it's a good one. I think that there's a lot of more angsty stake in it, really. I like it. Yeah. And yeah, I think Is it is it for I don't know if it's for the first proper 10th Doctor episode. Yeah, it is actually. It's the first proper 10th Doctor episode. Because Christmas Invasion, he's asleep. Mm. And then New Earth, he's Cassandra. And then uh, Tooth and Claw, he's properly the Doctor in it. So it's, it's the 10th Doctor's first proper full story. Yeah, first time David Tennant's playing the Doctor the whole time. <laughs> I mean, That's he nice. does be a I mean, Scottish person in there. Yeah, Are we in Scotland? That's terrible. Okay. <laughs> Oh god. god but yeah, sort of Chevalier, Guy Adams, it's just such a fun romp for me. I just loved it from start to finish. It's such a fun joy ride. I think it's one of the shorter ones as well, which probably helps. It, they've trimmed the fat off with this one, straight to the point. Just fun characters, fun action, an interesting, like equally horrifying and also amusing monster. I think there's just so many I good think, moments from memory. I think as well with this story, it sort of takes a lesser known historical figure in the form of a chevalier and yeah. you know breeds new life because I feel like the chevalier is quite an interesting character of history. Um, so I think that it was quite nice to explore a lesser known historical figure and that in it being set in Slough, very cool. And that sort of scene of the doctor fencing um, is always a delight. To have yeah. that action and the monster, very cool. That was it, sort of a slate, um, capturing for humans for slaves. Oh, slavery? yeah, that, yeah, that's just it's come just, come back to my brain. Yeah, and I think that was it. And there, uh, yeah, and also yeah. you sort of like get a bit of a glimpse of it on the cover with that masquerade type mask, don't you? Uh, Which is very sort of clockwork droid esque, isn't it? With that sort of yeah. masquerade feel, yeah. Um, and I think it might have had like two heads or something, or three heads, and like one of them was this weird half dead thing. I can't, yeah, I so think that was a better like, exorbital off, maybe. <laughs> yeah, they, there we go. And then the series two <laughs> collection there, there with that. There we go. Yeah, and I think it was also quite um, poignant for the time it came out because it was either just before or a lot long after we had the reveal of Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor. Mm, and so yes. obviously, gender plays quite a role in this one with the um, Chevalier being uh, a woman. And I think it sort of debated a bit in history, isn't it? Mm. Because yeah, because it wasn't as well documented then. But yeah, certainly this story treats her as a woman, and so yeah, it was sort of poignant for that time with the Doctor then becoming a woman. Either before I cannot remember. Um, yeah, this was 2018, wasn't it? When was Jodie? Uh, this was, was it... 20 November 2017. This box. Oh, 2017. This... So. Jodie was revealed July 2017. Oh, so... yeah, because she regenerated then the next month after this. So, yeah. Mm. Yes, yeah, so I think certainly it feels like it came out at the right time for that discussion. Yeah. I think I thought they have like pushed forward even better there with their transgender representation, with, with um, trans standards. I was and actually having a transgender actress portraying the transgender character, whereas here it is unfortunately a. Um, I think male actor, isn't it? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah, but I think you know, is it Nicholas Grace? Yeah, I believe it is. Yeah, yeah so a big finish regular. Yeah, yeah. So, but certainly it was a step in the right direction. Now they have dived into that even more. But yeah, the story itself just a load of fun, really for me. I just really enjoy it. I want to say it's brilliant or Alonzi. Ah, I'm leaning between the two as well. I don't. know. I'm not sure whether it's quite our, deserved. Should we have our first Alon Z, maybe? Oh, okay. uh, oh. Yeah, we'll, we'll be nice. Let's yeah. go for Alon Z. Your kindness is uh, accepted, but I will not forgive yeah. you about the next one, <laughs> because I feel like we are going to so disagree on this. Oh, I wonder how low you're going to pick. 
I know where I want to put it, and I'm just very intrigued where you're going to put Cold Vengeance now because you know ah. you've been you've been kind to me, but whether I will be <laughs> kind <laughs> back you... to you is a different story. <laughs> will you repay my kindness? Probably not. Uh, but yeah, you're, you're <laughs> the one. You're the one with the mouse here. You have total control over where things go. And yet you made the tier list, so you have no power here. Yeah. God, you have taken right. my creation and used it against me. <laughs> Absolutely. God. It's what all the best people do. God. Cold like the... Vengeance. Yeah. Do you want to compare it to Rogue One? Go I'm on. Krennic and you're Tarkin. I can, I, I can accept that. I'll be Peter <laughs> Cushing. I'll be Peter Cushing. Yeah, there you go. I'll be Ben Mendelsohn. Uh, oh, but yeah, Cold Vengeance. Another fun romp, really. I think so far with 10th Doctor Adventures, there hasn't been too much in terms of substance, but when there's style, there is a lot of good style. And yeah, Cold Vengeance for me, it's sort of like the earth shock of the Ice Warriors in some ways. There is a lot of fun to be had in this story. And I, I love the setting as well, like this cold... <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you found fun in it, because I didn't. <laughs> oh, no. You just don't like the ghettos. <laughs> It makes no sense. <laughs> Carry on. Who, was it? Yeah, it was Matt Fitt in this one. I think also there's that joy of this is the first time we've had the Tenth Doctor going up against a recurring monster because so far it's all been original creations, and now we get to hear him go up against a monster that could have easily been used at the time, using the new series design as well. There on the cover. You know, it took a bit longer for the Ice Warriors to actually appear in the new series, but it's something that you could easily imagine happening earlier. And so, yeah, I just, I really do like this story. Go on, rip into it. Do you know what makes this really painful for me? What? This was the one I was really looking forward to. Oh, there you go. Because I'm such a huge fan of the Ice Warriors, you know, they're probably my favorite monster outside Daleks and Slyberman. I just absolutely love them. Mm. So having that childhood doctor and one of my favorite monsters, I was like, yeah, this is going to be so exciting. And then you start listening to it. I mean, this is mismarketing. This is mismarketing oh, by Big Finish because you have your new series, Ice Warrior, but you have your classic voices. And it just, it just threw me. I did not oh, like I that. I did not mind that. Because it is, it's between the two, though, isn't it? Because it's we're not quite at the Cold War point yet, so it's nice for them to save that new voice for then. And also, I just prefer, I prefer the classic voice, to be honest. I did. It sounds I, better. No, I just didn't didn't like it. And then it just being set on a giant fridge, what was going to crash into a planet? It just. <laughs> and then you've got the ghettos, and then the weird pirates. Who were just attacking this sort of green? Yeah, pirates place. recently the weakest part of the story for me. I was, it just I listen. I tried listening to it back on the vinyl to see if it worked better as a two parter, and quite frankly, it didn't. It just made oh, it drag dear. even more. I just really <laughs> can't stand it, and it pains oh, me to no. say that. And for me, it's it's my least favorite Temper Doctor audio. I just genuinely no. Uh, I want well, it's 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 that sort of type of story where I want to love it. But I just really can't. No. Uh, where do you want to put it then? Where is calling you? Is it really? I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Ice warriors in the ghetto. This noble race in ghetto. No, God. No. <laughs> I. It's got to be. I'm sorry because I'm oh, sorry God. not fit, and I'm. I just don't like it. I just really don't. <laughs> I'd have put it in good or even brilliant. I would have gone as far as Alan C, don't worry. Oh, yes, I... I... <laughs> Are we compromising on a mare? Is this where it's going? You know what? You've been you've been kind to me, so I'll be oh, kind thank to you. Thank you. Thank you. But for me, I it should be bottom. <laughs> 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 there we go. <sighs> on a more positive note, the no place I bloom in love. Yeah. I think that was brilliant. I think yeah, that I it's it's very much like the the lost series four story. What was planned, wasn't it? Of them doing sort of a, a Doctor Who most haunted, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's sort of, it takes a similar idea, but in not quite the same sense. Because I think that was going to be the midnight equivalent, wasn't it? 
before mm. they went with that instead and it was just going to be the doctor on there well donna and wilf and um sylvia sylvia yeah i was thinking jacqueline or jackie because it's jacqueline um gosh i've forgotten her surname now who plays her hill jacqueline yeah hill. yeah there we go but yeah sylvia yeah those three like watching the tv instead we get a story where they're all they all get to be involved in that in this creepy house a lot of creepy stuff going on and all told from that point of view of it being this most haunted like this haunted makeover is a thing they call the show mm. yeah again and... it's got a game of thrones person in it ah being the presenter there we go yeah. <laughs> yeah there's a lot of good little moments in there like stuff dripping out of the tats or out the cupboards you have all that creepy stuff out the back yeah I'll... It's got a bonus of... ribbons in it, so yeah, it's naturally, all... naturally, it's his only big finish um, with the tenth Doctor. So naturally, it, it's a real standout. Yeah, and I, I think that the comedy is played so well with the tenth Doctor and Donna, because throughout series four, you got that joke: Are they a couple? You know, are you a thing? And they actually have to be the couple in this. Yeah, um, and if you've seen, I think the Shakespeare performance they did, um, Much Ado About Nothing, where they play um, Benedict and Beatrice. Um, it's very much like that, um, those two within it. Yeah, that's true. But I think the one thing what lets this story down is just the ending. It does, It's a bit rushed, isn't it, from memory? Yeah. It just yeah, seems to end in like five minutes and you're like, okay, was that it? Like it's got some good little jump scares within it. Um, remember there being a little jump scare within it. Yeah, I think it does very well with the balancing the comedy and the fright doesn't it i think one never compromises the other mm, that is true yeah that's it i'd lean towards brilliant with this one i'm in the green like you say the ending is sadly not as good as it could have been is it better i'll put it i'll put it there there we go yeah uh, i don't we won't get into <laughs> rankingable between each mm. other yeah one mile down i think that this is very 2008 donna wearing crocs and a little baby jadoon what more uh, can you want really it's uh, got, got the wonderful costume designed by june hudson which makes the limited edition worth getting just for that yeah got the anti-capitalist messaging in there as well always gotta love that <laughs> is there some police brutality in there too is it jadoon I think so, yeah. I think you can expect that of Jadoon. Yeah, there you go. You've got um, the little baby Jadoon as well, of sorts. Was it Plo? Yeah, yeah. Good old yeah. Nick Briggs doing his Jadoon. Yeah, Jadoon Junior, I think they nicknamed him. Was it? Uh, that was, he's a highlight of the story. He's a highlight. Yeah, I think it's the weakest of Volume 3 for me, but Volume 3 is just so strong overall and very consistent that it's not the worst by much i'm in agreement with that i'll agree with that uh, it's uh, it's got a lot of fun as well to be had definitely it's it's that sort of disaster movie episode isn't it hmm. it's definitely got that sort of that stake to it and the alien civilization is quite interesting with the fish people they're pretty cool uh, I love the whole idea of them being pushed out further and further and their lives being changed for tourism. But I don't, I love that idea in concept of having a story around it and criticizing it. Not, I love that idea as in, yes, do that to native <laughs> species. You heard it here for yeah, this. Oh dear. Um, yeah. I, I want to say it's, it's good, quite frankly. I'd say, yeah, I'd agree with good. So one more down goes in good yeah it's one of those ones that can only work on audio though like you say mm. 2008 you can imagine it but i think almost with the whole underwater setting and everything the budget wouldn't quite stretch to it sadly. you can sort of see how they would have done it like in wars of mars where you'd see like the water start dripping slowly and then yeah i suppose they'd have to change up quite a few things because the way it, it seemed to be like this big bubble didn't it around the whole thing yeah this sort of glass dome so it was like a a fish aquarium but it didn't have any water in yeah yeah so it's called the opposite of a of a fish tank really hmm uh. right the next one creeping death 
This is my favorite of of volume three. Hmm. I don't, on re listen, I'm really not sure. It could be my favorite as well. I think I, so. I, I thought you were going to give a plot twist then. I thought you were going to oh, say, no, it was terrible. <laughs> oh, oh, no, no, no. I really do enjoy this one. I think, again, brilliant setting as well, like in the smog, very creepy atmosphere, some wonderful characters all around. And yeah, I just like them going on this journey through London uh, at this time. But, yeah, I don't because I re-listened to it and No Place, and I'm not sure which I prefer. They're both very strong. Hmm. I mean, this is obviously a good story because it won an award, so it's a it's a good one. Yeah, I think you uh, always so Roy Gill is as well. Yeah, Roy Gill. Yeah. Um, I think that Ivy should have been a companion. It's a very it's got modern sensibilities, but reflects the um, views of the time with certain characters within there. Yeah, I think um, it's nice to have that looking back. It it shows not only the danger in alien life, but also in humanity with the smog mm. and neutralizing. It's a bit like the Vashnarada, I think. Is it the aliens? Like the, it's, it's something with an F, isn't it? Um, I can't remember what it was called. Yeah, I'm not quite sure. But yeah, again, it's very 2008 villain in a sense, isn't it, with those? You can sort, sort of imagine of lur- that. Lurking in there. And they sort of, I guess it sort of riffs off Atmos in a way. With the sort of, oh, like, yeah, the that's true as well. Um, I, I also like what Donna says during the story about how, yeah, she's very much been the audience surrogate saying, "I, how have I never heard of this? This like huge event where all the smog comes down. It's even got a green tint to it because of all the pollution. Like you think that'd be a huge event, and I mean it was a huge event, but we never hear about it as much now. Like very much for me, it was listening to the story that I learned that this was a thing, which is quite shocking. I think you it think? was still on the Crown as well, wasn't it? Around the same time this was released. Yeah, mate, that would make sense. Um, I think as I mean, this might be me looking really deep in to try and find a series four connection, but I guess it's a bit like. Fires of Pompeii with the pyroclastic flow from Mount Vesuvius come on Pompeii. Yeah, they, they, I'm just finding series every little, four all in one. I'm just finding really, really obscure things to go. It links to series four in this way. Yeah, I'm sure. Uh, series. I'm sure Partners in Crime or something had a red bus in the background somewhere driving along. So there you go. It, that's another. That's the link. And it hints at the future of uh, the Tenth Doctor of Planet of the Dead, because he's on a red bus in that. All right, there we go. And it has the prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. Alonzi? Alonzi. There we go. I can agree with that, and I think I know where this one's going to go, because I feel like this is a special release. Out of Time, Big Finishes, Summer Blockbuster Audio of the Year. Yeah. Um, this was a real it. treat. This is a, a real, real delight to listen to. Um, I had a lot of fun listening to this. I think Always this was like good times as well from last year. Like it came out when lockdown restrictions were easing. Obviously, they got clamped back down again mm. um, going forward. But yeah, it was sort of like our first bit of proper freedom in a while after being cooped up inside. The sun was shining, birds were singing, and Tom Baker and David Tennant had united on audio. <sighs> it was. Everything came together at the right time for this release. Yeah, and it's just, I mean, Daleks as well. What's not to love there? See, the f- going up against them. The story is very much a big finish Fisher Price. It's simple, you know, there's nothing to the story, but you enjoy it because of the, the most iconic classic doctor of the 20th century and the iconic doctor of the 21st century meet together. Yeah, you know, it's. Right. It's what you wanted to do with your action figures when character options did the classic Doc C figures. It was that possibility. And it genuinely feels like a story you would do with your action figures. And that's not the, the negative. Yeah, having the Red Supreme and the classic Daleks, I think, leans into that as well, even more so. Absolutely. And the setting, the Cathedral of Contemplation, that whole concept is superb. I love it. Um, mm. the, the little moments about Sarah Jane between the two characters is so lovely. I thought that yeah. was really touching. Um, and just seeing the 10th Doctor, I guess, on the back of Time Lord Victorious in a way, because he's sort of looking a bit 
he's still a bit catty in this, isn't he? He's still a bit yeah, it's towards the end fun. of his era. This is yeah, this is right before end of time because he's on his party planning phase, isn't he? So yeah, he wants he wants to have a bit of good old fun, does the old tenth doctor? Um, but yeah, this was a sheer delight to listen to, and I I feel like it has to be Alonzi just because of the sheer spectacle of it, really. Hmm. See, I'd lean more towards brilliant just because the story isn't quite there, but it's what it needs to be. So I sort of feel conflicted there in a the sense that yeah, the story could have been better, but it didn't need to be better for the event that this was. Mm. So yeah, I'd lean more towards brilliant myself. So I'll leave it up to you where you want to put it. I'll I'll go brilliant. I'll go brilliant because you've you've agreed with with quite a few of my picks. So I'll. I'll agree. With... Yeah, I mean, it's still a very high rating, and definitely Absolutely. just for what it is, it's worth picking up and enjoying. I mean, it's currently on sale right now, so if you want it, and the next three stories: expiry dating, precious annihilation, and ghosts, they're all yeah. on on sale because they were part of the Doctor Who magazine um, poll list uh, winners. Mm. So if you want to check out those, and now's your chance, I guess. Yeah, and there's also the um, bundle as well with the. Um, out of time trilogy so yeah, that's also worth a look if you haven't got that already right should we go on to Temp Doctor and River Song one of the yeah. most surprising releases of 2020 um, a release solely made out of lockdown and it doesn't show at all I think that no, it's it really, really, really good solid release and I know that you were, I guess, quite on the on the fence until you rewatched um, the Matt Smith Angel two part, where it, it made sense that River had encountered a Doctor prior to that story. So, take it away with your oh, thoughts. Yeah. I think I was always excited for this. Set. Okay, I, I think I you might be you'd... confusing my opinion with James there. Maybe, he... maybe. Yeah, I think I did. Yeah. I do remember making that argument to him. I think of when you rewatch that, you do sort of sit. I think that and silence in Yeah, no, actually thinking about it, the um Angel Two Parter I haven't rewatched since after listening to this oh, set. Oh, okay, sorry. My yes. bad. Yeah. Oh, I know yeah. So in um Silence in the Library and Forest of the Dead, you have that line from River where she asks, Have we done the Byzantium yet? Which is the um ship in that two parter. Which makes you think that was originally planned to be a Tenth Doctor story, because the way River interacts with him here is very much like this isn't her first time even encountering this Doctor. Mm. And so, yeah, now we get to see more of that. And I think it very nicely bridges the gap. And there's even some things that we didn't, well, certainly I didn't necessarily think about. I'm not sure if you were the same, but the idea that the Doctor isn't even sure she's a time traveler yet until he gets confirmation in this set. And so that was quite a nice touch as well to think about something that just came as second nature to us is something that the doctor naturally has to learn at some point and mm. so you know you get little bridges like that in here i think also thematically the whole set picks up on how the doctor left river in that set as this data ghost and sort of explores that a bit more even though this is all of this is river pre that 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 is thematically a link throughout this set but yeah expiry dating what a brilliant start that is what a unique idea and this whole set is very much like the 10th doctor crashing into the matt smith era in some ways like a lot of these stories have the feel of um the 11th doctor's era with river song in there expiry dating but especially because yeah. that feels very very moffat because yeah, it's all it's scary. all done through correspondence, isn't it? Through like mm. letters, them receiving each uh, each other letters, and you know, River wants the Doctor to go to the Apocalypse Vault, which you know sounds like a lovely date to go on, doesn't it? The Apocalypse Vault, but yeah, the Doctor's very against all that, um, mm. and you get a simp uh, Fifth Doctor, which is always yeah. a delight. Yeah, that was quite fun, and you even get a little Colin cameo. Which he's I'm on. kind of disappointed they spoiled because that would have been a nice little moment since he's not in there much. But his name's on the cover, but he's not on the cover, is it? Because he's only a voicemail, isn't he? Yeah. Oh, I don't. No, he's not even on the cover. Actually, he was just on the cast I, list. Isn't it? Yeah, yeah. His, his name's on there, isn't it? That's what I mean. Yeah. 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 Certainly. But yeah, that aside, I think there's another couple of nice surprises in there, not necessarily in cameos, but in 
like other forms of correspondence other doctors may worm their way into the story i think it's a nice back and forth between the 10th doctor and river as they get to know each other well as the doctor gets to know her more at least and we get to see more of um his point of view of river and whether or not he should trust her because this is a woman who sacrificed her life for him but he still doesn't know much about and so i think that's a fascinating exploration there with um expiry date in particular goes into that very strongly mm. so yeah i think it was, it was nice with um river song as well to have her in a different kind of set because I think we're both big fans of the diary of River song series and so throughout that we were getting stories with the doctor for a while but it was all told from river's point of view and all often times the doctor lost his memory somehow by the end of it or they found some other way around it with them not actually meeting in person or something. And so here we get a story where we don't have to worry about that. We can just have the two of them interacting for a change and not having to work around that issue. So that was quite refreshing. And having him on equal footing, because this is very much, there's a reason it is the 10th Doctor and River Song. It's because she's not a companion. She is very much the co-star of this in a lot of ways. So... Yeah, I've sort of gushed over the whole set rather than expiry dating itself, but brilliant premise, brilliant execution, lots of great stuff in there. I'd, I'd say brilliant. What about you? I, I was going to say Alan Z, to be honest. I just, oh, I had a lot of fun Alan with Z. it. Go on. I had a lot of fun with this. Yeah. I think that it was just a sheer delight and it was just a great experience and a, what a way to open the box set personally. Yeah, um, very much a strong start for this series. It's a, from, my favourite of the set. It, for me, it's it's from the strongest start to the weakest of the box set with Precious and Yeah, same. Um, yeah, this came out around the same time as, was it The Flying Dutchman? And that left a bit of a sour taste in my mouth. Yeah, and then we're on um, another ship. Yeah, another sort of ship around the same time with these exploding jewellery. Um, I genuinely, I can't remember much about it. I know that River roped the Doctor into this adventure. Yeah, and it was quite a messy story as well. I think it started off with some promise, and I think it has a good ending, I think, for me. It finds a way to pick itself back up again towards the end, but that middle chunk, it just doesn't quite work for me at all. Yeah, I think... It's not it's not the finest hour of Tenth Doctor on Big Finish. No. I think it's funny as well, because you were saying about how this was very much like not a rushed production in a bad sense, but certainly they got started on it straight away, hit the ground running, got them all done pretty quickly when they knew they were available in lockdown. Precious Annihilation of the three stories was one that was actually planned to be they say in the interviews it was going to be a talking book of some kind. So I'm thinking it might have been one of the audio novels at one point before they then adapted the story into this. And so it's funny thinking that the one that was the most planned and had the most going on before, and I suppose what would be the least rushed, you'd think, is actually the weakest of the set. Yeah. yeah. It goes to show that doing your assignment last minute... 12 o'clock when it's due in the next morning isn't always a bad thing. Procrastination's a wonderful thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, I think it's got to be well, maybe. Yeah, I'd agree. You'd agree. Yeah. So it's got redeeming parts, but I think overall it sags a lot, sadly. Ghost, on the other hand, was was a lovely, lovely story by Jonathan Morris. Uh, the sound design, I love the sort of ethereal music to it, that sort of ghostly feel to it, with a sort of choir sort of feel to it, the music. Um, the whole idea of, you know, the Doctor and River seeing the ghost, it's sort of ghosts of each other. That's quite an interesting um, idea, and I guess it sort of plays on sort of a common sci-fi trope. But I, I really had a lot of fun listening to it. I think that it's a, it's a good, solid story from memory. Yeah, I think certainly it's nothing incredible, but there's a lot of fun to be had for it. And it's a decent close to a set, I'd say. Uh, I'd probably I'd go good for that one. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Oh, no computer. Here we go. 
See, my mouse likes to freeze, and I'm very scared. <laughs> it's just got to freeze and oh, no. not not do anything. Oh, I can I can do this one yeah, now. There you go. I'll leave the floor to you. Right, Echoes of Extinction, the last piece in the Time Lord Victorious Jigsaw, the vinyl exclusive release. Um, what has been very much the Doctor equivalent of No Time to Die, the James Bond story. Yeah, um, pushed back. December was the original plan, wasn't it? Then we didn't think, get into it. Was November. I think it was November. What makes oh, it? Oh, yeah. um, and then got it in April and became an Amazon exclusive. And uh, yeah, if you ordered it from Amazon, you got it quicker than Big Finish. Yeah, that's what I, I think. It was one of those funny things of when it came out, people were like, "Oh yeah, Time Lord Victorious was a thing." Yeah, because this is this is quite an interesting interesting story in the sense that it's the start for the eighth Doctor in Time Lord Victorious, and it's the last in the tenth Doctor bit of media. Um, so it's sort of a bookend in that. It's sort of the start and the end. So it's it's sort of a bookend in that regard. Um, story wise, I think that they're two good stories. Um, there's a nice little two scenes at the end. So once you finish the credits, there is a little scene afterwards. Um, mm. it's great to have a bit more of a uptight 10th Doctor, a bit more scratchy and catty 10th Doctor who isn't quite Tigger esque, he's not bouncing all over the place full of energy, he's quite more somber and a bit more psaki, I guess, a bit very reflective for the suppose... specials. Yeah, I suppose that's what you get in expiry dating as well. Yeah, it's very much the same with that, um, really. Um, whereas the Paul McGann story just seems a little bit a bit more simple with him just trying to rescue this some someone from this killer killer robot thing. Um it's got Paul Clayton playing this wonderful um sort of Hargreaves character like from Aquitaine. Oh um, yeah. That was a sheer delight. Um but I think they do link in quite nicely. Um, so I, I think that it, it's it's a good a good experiment. I think that's why I admire it. It's not the best story in the world, but I admire the ambition and the experiment nature of of the actual story itself. Yeah. But similar to Out of Time, it's not the best story, but just for what it is, it's something special. Well, yeah, because it, it's it's this vinyl only release, so I guess it has that precedent of being that sort of oddity in in the big finished catalog, and yeah, uh, you feel feel quite lucky to have it in a way. How much was it limited to? Was it about five thousand? One thousand five hundred. Oh wow! That, yeah. That so is... it was um quite a small run of vinyls, really. I mean, I don't. I think the smallest number of vinyls big finish have done. In terms of mass market, it was the infamy of Azaros one. I think that was seven hundred and fifty, uh, which is bizarre because that's tenant. You think that'd get? But I guess that was HMV, wasn't it? That one. So maybe that they was HMV, with yeah. less shops around the country. They needed. They required less stock. But yeah, I think all the other vinyls have been like at least in the in the thousands. I think. Yeah, I think usually around one thousand five hundred like that one. Be enough. Well, what about? Yeah, I think Dalek Universe and the Ninth Doctor stuff, that's only 500 each, isn't it? Isn't, I thought it was 1,000. Well, maybe, yeah. I mean, we're still waiting for the Ravagers vinyl listeners. <laughs> and watch yeah. It's turned up. Um, oh, guess, yeah, it's 1,000. You're right. Yeah. Oh. I guess speaking of um, Dalek Universe, shall we, uh, we dive in? Yeah, let's go for it. So we've got buying time. Um, yeah. And then once you've done this, we'll have a look at the chat and uh, we'll answer your questions as well. Yeah. So don't worry, we're not ignoring the chat. Um, it's just I can't see the chat on the laptop. Yeah, I think we'll go into that and then go into our Dalek Universe 2 discussion. But yeah, can I just grab? Ooh. I'm just grabbing my vinyl copy. Okay, all what? right. Ooh. He's, he's going to do like a little flex. Yeah. See, I can't there. see at all. I've only got the screen. There we go. There it is. Looks wonderful. There. There we go. Look, got a little peek of my face there as well. There you go. Face reveal from Luke. Yeah. All right. Buy... Know, it's on my channel somewhere. Yeah, I'm sure it's far uh... back in the archives. It's not. It's not a real shocker. No. But yeah, that. 
certainly it'll be great to get some more of those in the collection. It's such a such a nice package, and just having the artwork at that size as well is always great. Nah, see, I've not I've not got any of the triple gate vinyls yet. So yeah, you're I'm still waiting on for, Ravages for Ravages, and then I can see what it's like. Yeah, I'm wondering whether my Dalek Universe Two is going to end up coming before that at this rate. Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah we'll probably be waiting another couple of months for the other vinyl <laughs> releases. Yeah, but buying time. The um, Kickstarter to Dalek Universe, in a way, or is it the um, Dalek Protocol that kickstarts it, or is it the Queen of the Mechanoids? Who knows? Uh, we'll but it's very stage. much the kickstart of the main event, the Tenth Doctor stuff, and it's just a lot of fun, really, isn't it? This story. Oh yeah, I think absolutely. Some... Yeah, very strong moments, and it's just starting off with a bang, literally, in the um, case of the spaceship exploding, which is why there's all that fire on the cover. Um, Mark's great in the story, Anya's, yeah, really good too, alongside the 10th Doctor, getting those two characters uniting after um, quite a while, and quite an interesting place they left off in the Perfect Prisoners and so I think Which that I was think later on. Yeah, that was quite nice to see how the Tenth Doctor reacts to this character. Uh, yeah, it's just a really fun romp to start with, isn't it? Yeah, and it's, it's not what a cliffhanger. Yeah, it's not the like a ten out of ten start, but it's a really good, solid way of introducing us into um, the series, how it plays into some obscure um monsters from the daleks master plan um, yeah. in that sense so it's sort of a nice continuation from the syndicate master plan in that sense really yeah. um, it's what it needs to be isn't it yeah it, it does what a first story should do it it sets up the arc of the 10th doctor being flung back in time to a, a pre-time war age um and we start the whole sort of terry nation universe really with it um yeah, I, I'm. I would. I want to say it's in good. I think that it's a good, solid opener for me personally. Uh, I'd lean even towards brilliant for this one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go brilliant. Let's go brilliant. Yeah. Then. It's not I quite think... an Alon Z, but it's just it's Sorry. what it needs to be, and it is a lot of fun. Oh, and then we move on to even more a lot of fun with the wrong woman, which. Oh. What a what an absolute delight this was. This was a an absolute I think this story took everyone by surprise, really. I think that this these two stories in particular, um, Buying Time and The Wrong Woman, definitely made people so intrigued with this series. Mm. Um Tenants on fire within this quite quite literally is just giving it his all that whole speech that he can bring back for Time Lords and Rose. Um yeah. and Gemma Gemma Whelan's character, who again she's in Game of Thrones, uh, oh, another one, <laughs> another one in Game of Thrones. Yeah. Um, it's like bingo, isn't it? With these lot, it really is. It really is. Um, so it's quite a nice idea in Game of Thrones and actually putting a face to to a voice. Um, mm. But yeah, it was really really good, especially that twist, which I guess is kind of ruined now. But yeah, yeah. we won't we won't say anymore. I'm not gonna, not going to say. If you can get the surprise, still go for it. But yeah, it's a, it's a bit of a messy one for me, though. I feel like it's not as strong as buying time. Hmm. But certainly it is a lot of fun. And I certainly did enjoy it a lot more on re-listen. I think for me, it, it's sort of the same level as buying time, maybe a little bit higher, maybe. Ah, I think so that we'll it's, it's very opposite. much consistent, really, for me. Yeah. See, I'd lean towards good with that one. Would you lean towards brilliant then? Yeah, I'd, yeah, I'd go because I think yeah, I'd say so. Yeah. Um, as my mouse froze because this is Ooh. this is a scary thing. Ah, oh, yeah. there we go. Ooh. Ah, it's back. Ooh, that was tense. Yeah, we're gonna go brilliant then since we did let's the go brilliant time. So, yeah, so you can't really have one without the other, really. No, there they are, paired up next to each other. Paired up. Yeah. Will the wrong woman join them? Well, no, House of Kingdom, sorry. Uh, probably not. <laughs> no, it's, a, it's still a very good story, though. Oh, and again, what I got even more out of on Relisten. I think what makes this enjoyable as well with this story is that 
um, it kind of follows into the cycle of destruction because, well, I guess Dalek Universe, the House of Kingdom, and the Lost are very much all character focused stories, would you say? Mm, yeah. Especially, um, so I guess this starts the trend of let's focus on Anya. Um, yeah. And we get I think there's lovely... also a thematic tie to the Trojan Daleks as well, with the idea of how the Daleks have affected the human race and what they will do to fight back against them. Absolutely. Um, so what did you make of um, the House of Kingdom? Uh, I think it's got some very good character moments. It's nice exploring more of Anya and exploring more of the family connections that we have there, obviously, from her name alone, with her ties to Brett Vion and Sarah Kingdom of the Daleks' master plan fame. We know there was a legacy there, and so it's nice that we get to explore that here, find out how they are connected, and yeah, just have some. It's a nice little bit of downtime as well. The first half of this story, after all the action of the um, buying time and the wrong woman, this epic two-parter. It's nice that after a bit of an action scene to kick off, we have a bit of downtime with these characters in the House of Kingdom um, before everything gets a bit messy towards the end, in both for the characters. And also, sadly, for the plot a bit as well. I think it's a bit hard to keep up with the what they're the visuals they're trying to portray and what exactly they're going for. Um, still, strong moments though, and yeah, I'd say I'd put it in good. How about you? I'd agree with good um, personally. I think the House of Kingdom for me. It, it does have that sort of um, classic meets new who. And I think Andrew Smith Ooh, is a definitely. good writer, um, is a good writer for that. Because if you listen to Return to Scaro, it has that sort of very authentic 60s feel, which this story has, but it still has that sort of modern sensibilities as well within it. Um, you know, and we've got sort of the Tenth Doctor sort of riding a mechanoid, which sort of is a bit like Gadget Gadget from the, <laughs> the specials, really. So I think that was quite cool. Um, that's just a fun visual in your head. Um, the Tenth Doctor plays it with you being rodeo with a, a mechanoid. Um, the Varga plants are always great to have because it just shows the brutality of them and having the space pirate in there. Nice little fun fun thing to feature within there. And the whole twist with involving that sort of spaceport was was enjoyable, really. And then we get the like you said the the more quieter uh, character drama with Anya really and her and her father. Yeah, I think it balances both quite well, but yeah, it doesn't quite land in the second half. Yeah, so that is that's good. That's a that's a good listen. Another big bombastic story, which also has some quite strong character elements, the gates of hell. Yes. Um is it the summer blockbuster for 2021 or is that Dalek Universe 2? I guess that's that's up for debate, really. Yeah. Um, say. In some yeah. ways, this feels like it would have suited a winter list some more, actually. Maybe, yeah. Especially sort of October time with like the catacombs, which yeah. I think they should have probably done a little bit more. I think the story should have lent in a little bit more to the Cybermen body horror aspect, personally. I think it's a very rush rush go go story isn't it like it never mm. stays in one place or time for too long and yeah you sort of like have the epic action of all the cybermen and the cyber army invading that all happens towards the start and then we sort of lose that a bit and only one of them ends up being a threat really towards the end i think i, I mean i've said this in a previous live stream one of the standout things was when they were moving to the Paris archive. And I think I would have liked oh, to have yes. had a bit more time spent within that section of the story, you know, see the cyber occupied, you know, Paris, you know, cause you've got a lovely bit of body horror with them going in, in the tent to find any survivors and that sort of hope being snatched away from these two very human doctors really. And I think that again, the reason you turn to this story is for the character interactions, but I think for this story, it, it's more of a plot driven thing than going, hey, look at these two doctors. It does have its moments where it's like that. But I think in terms of a story, Gates of Hell has more of a, a story than out of time, if that makes sense. Yeah, I definitely agree there. And I think 
it almost it feels like it's too rushed like it's got enough there to tell the story effectively like you never feel too lost with it but at the same time it feels like it just needs to take a bit more time with these different things there's so many good moments but they're always cut a bit too short and so i just want to spend more time in the world of this story really have it it doesn't necessarily have to be a two-parter but just a bit longer would have been nice just to get to spend a bit more time with these characters exploring this story really and i mean some great supporting characters as well with um mark gattis playing what's the character's name uh let's get the page up there we go he was uh joseph delon yeah he was a great character and it's nice exploring um, his life that, really some, yeah someone who i would have thought would have just been there quite briefly in the story really ends up having quite a big role almost the opposite of mark gattis's role in dalek universe funnily enough where i thought that was gonna be quite big and important but he ends oh, yeah. up he was a red no. herring wasn't he yeah very much so yeah here it would he... be um sam Kiscard in dalek universe yeah here we get a lot more and then um shelly con as tina drake she mm. was a brilliant character really i really did enjoy her and her interactions with both doctors was um very nice having this time agent again something that is very much a merge of classic and new who because you do get the first name drop of those in talents wing chiang and this story sort of leans into similar visuals i would say with the setting that gothic horror but then also you know you don't actually see a time agent until the new series of captain jack and so she works well opposite both doctors not just in terms of performance but also in terms of just what she is as a character with her being a time agent works very well opposite classic and new who so yeah i think there's a lot to love i there just want more of it i think i think yeah it's it's sort of the the nicest criticism you can have that you wanted more from the story yeah. really because it just shows the, the sheer quality of of the story itself i think yeah. the cybermen yeah. what bits they do feature are great because you you've got them smashing through walls. I love that it plays with the the fifth doctor sort of vulnerability that he thinks that this is all his fault really. Um, mm. So I like I like that. I think the dynamic between um, five and ten is great. Um, it's 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 sort of interesting that you have the fifth doctor more as, more as a fatherly figure um, within yeah. this, um, which is interesting. Yeah, I'd say I like them getting along quite well. Actually. And in some ways, for me, I feel like when doctors meet, they're almost more like brothers in the mm. sense that they get along. They, but they have a lot of their bickering as well. They're both working towards the same ends, but there's a lot of one upmanship in there. Whereas these two, they're more like best friends than brothers. Like they're getting along, they're doing well, and they're also complimenting each other and getting along well and helping each other. <laughs> just elevating re each other really and so i think that's a nice change of pace for doctors meeting with this story yeah because you get the lines where they're like i shouldn't be enjoying this but i am and you know we shouldn't really be doing this but it's it's all good fun yeah uh um, um, it's, it's good it's just it's, good. it's great seeing the characters have fun as well as you know the actors are having fun too so I think that's what makes it enjoyable because they're enjoying it, so it becomes quite infectious. So I, I I'd yeah. say that it's a, it's a good one. So I, I, I want to say it's in good personally. So uh, yeah, I'd agree there. Good. Yeah. It's, it's not as special as Out of Time, but I think story wise, it's higher than Out of Time. But it's, it's just, you like mm. you said, you want, you want a bit more from it, really. Yeah, I would. Yeah, I would slightly lean towards brilliant myself, but I'd agree with good. I'd say that's a fair place for it. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, certainly, the um top of the table is looking very strong, isn't it? <laughs> Just definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. But there's only two stories in the bottom half. Uh, I mean, we've both been kind to each other with placement of certain stories. Uh, Cold Fusion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Still don't believe that's there. Uh, you know, maybe I'll re-listen to it and hate it, but... I hope so. I hope you can <laughs> see, wow. see the true horror of it. <laughs> Drag down my enjoyment, why don't you? Uh, that's yeah. my job. That's my job. Yeah, I think looking over that, it all seems 
pretty reasonable, that list. Yeah, it does, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah. Just All going right. back to the um, chat now for a bit, shall we, before those yeah, last three? I'll uh, stop sharing my screen for now and go back onto uh, yeah, StreamYard on. before we go into Dark Universe 2. Right, so where are we in the chat? Uh, gonna have to do a bit of scrolling up. Uh, yeah, I'm got your cover talk. Uh, Ooh. I'm seeing Shame. some quite amusing comments here, but just oh, uh, where am I? Should we where about we in the comments? This is great. Um, um I think where Mr. Bonk Cactus says about I meant covers, but fair play. Okay, um, whereabouts are we? Uh, then Geeky Jess says, I think you've summed up the set really well, although I think I need to revisit it since the new stuff have, has come out. It just gets better and better. So I'm assuming that would have been about volume one. That would, yeah, that would make sense. That would make uh, sense. Thank you, Geeky Jess. That is uh, agreeing. Yeah. See, this um, is the um, problem of going back to the chat and not having the <laughs> reference to what we're talking about, but... <laughs> There we go. Would uh, Legacy of Time then the 20th anniversary special um, would that count as a cameo for David Tennant and that's why that's not on your list? Yeah. I mean, you haven't listened to Legacy of Time, so oh, I guess... Oh, that's, that's true. Isn't it? But uh, yeah, I I'm, think from what I know, it's very much just a short cameo, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's a, little, a cameo. And I guess if you want to be pedantic, you'll include another cameo, what was from this year, but I'm not going to spoil it because that was took everyone by surprise. Yeah, and so quite a few cameos in. Like, I think he's had four or five in different releases. I mean, you could say Tales from New Earth, but that's not been on the tier list. Oh, yeah. was he actually cameoing in that, or was that someone? No, reading that? that was somebody reading in, in for Tenant. Oh uh, yeah, there we go. Um, my top two covers would be Trojan Dalek and Lost. Trojan Dalek, yeah, they are both big fan, big fan of that. Yeah, I love that one. Uh, what else we got? Plot-wise, Infamous as Aros is my favourite story of Volume Two. I'd agree with that. I mean, I, I would, yeah. but I mean, no, I'd agree. But it's it's a good story. I'd agree. Yeah. I respect but your opinion. Infamous yeah. Aros twist has to be one of Big Finish's best in my opinion. Oh, okay. Here oh, yeah. best twist in my opinion, but maybe because I bought it later down the line without all the hype around it. That is, oh, that could help. Yeah. That could help actually, yeah, because we we pretty much get it as soon as it's released. So. Yeah, I think it was, yeah. I think it's an interesting direction to take the story in. At least it just the execution didn't work for me. I like uh, yeah, I like the concept of the twist. <clears throat> Aiden Woodhead. To be honest, I thought the tenant was fairly weak in volume two. He was trying way too hard to make his voice uh, was loud enough, and the strain made him sound really graspy. Oh. I, I I I can't really fault Tennant's performance to be honest. I think that yeah. he always gives a stellar job, especially in in Dalek Universe. Uh, newer from Series Two of the Revival has an error when it was cut back to Rose. It held captive before she was possessed in the light beam. Isn't there? I can't remember. I haven't seen New Earth in a long time. Oh, I have watched it fairly recently, but I can't I can't say I remember that. But... Uh, I mean, this is a very, very true comment um, by Geek Jess. One thing that comes to mind is that I need to re-listen to a lot of Big Finish. Yeah, um, uh, <laughs> so much comes out, you just never have time, do you? Oh, gosh, it's never-ending. You finish one release, and then next the next day they announce some more releases, and you're like, ah, oh, back to it then. But it's great, it's great. Um, Game of Thrones levels of betrayal right here between Ben and Luke, yeah. yeah. There's, been, there's been a bit of betrayal between each other, and uh, it's yeah, not over this... yet. There's been a lot more fighting in this one than we had in uh, the Eighth Doctor, isn't there? I mean, this is how you how you argue. You uh, have yeah. a nice disagreement, but we all have a compromise. We don't try and bite each other's heads off like on, yeah. on Twitter. Twitter's horrible when it's arguing. Yeah. And then when the screen isn't shared, you sneakily move Cold Vengeance down to the bottom, don't you, Ben? Yeah. yeah. That's going to happen. That's going to happen but, later on. Oh, dear. Better not. <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Depends on how I feel <laughs> about your slander of the early term <laughs> Doctor releases. Oh, God. Um, uh, did it. 
at what point are the cliffhangers to infamy of his house and cold vengeance on the vinyl edit um i honestly can't remember to be honest i genuinely can't um remember where the cliffhangers are um because yeah you, you don't get a download code for those so you can't recheck if on the app. Yeah, that, you have uh, to actually put it on. <laughs> yeah. Um, on that out. I mean, I could do, but that would uh, take time in the stream. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm not a big fan of the Tenth Doctor stuff with the big finish um, because of loss of Murray Gold's music and themes. I think Big Finish do a well enough job of replicating the the music of the time. I don't, you know, yeah. I think. I think it's not quite as full on because with audio, you can't necessarily have the music be the same. Because obviously with visuals, you can have those moments where it is just the visuals and the music selling it, but audio doesn't have that. And so the like, the music very much has to be a bit more subtle. I mean, this is this is a comment for me. Uh, the reason the Ice Warriors live in the ghetto is because the humans all listen to Cold Vengeance and they were so annoyed by it. They exiled the Ice Warriors. That's a <laughs> that's a canon reason right there of why the Ice Warriors are in the ghetto. Um, plot twist: It's the same bus in the Creeping Death and Planet of the Dead. Dun 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 dun. Uh, shortly after time, one must be one of Big Finish's most successful releases. It won Doctor Magazine poll and won a big UK audio and a big US audio award in best selling release. I think that it's got to be up there as one of Big Finish's best selling releases. Definitely. I think yeah. I think as well the Eccleston box set um is exactly is going to be up there as well as one of the most high selling releases. And I, I don't know what the most um sold big finish release is. Uh, that'd be quite interesting to find out. Yeah. Uh was the Ten and River set not meant to be an audiobook or something? Yeah, like I said, that was the um middle story precious. Um, Annihilation was originally planned as one of those, but then when it came along that David and Alex were available for remote recording, they switched up on uh, the story. Uh, da, 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 da. Now that Big Finish have replaced a political thriller spin off of Gallifrey in the form of Paladin, um, when do you think the police protocol spin off of DCI Menzi? I'm surprised they haven't done any more of DCI Menzi, um, because she was really good in the Condemned, and I think was it the. the doesn't she come back Bruce? in? The, doesn't she come back oh, in yes. Legacy of Time? Yes, yeah, she's in Legacy of Time as well. Gosh, I forgot that. Um, oh, wow. That shows how much that box that made an impact on. Me. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I wouldn't mind that. Maybe like a big finish line of duty. That would be quite cool to see them tackle that. Um, mm. in, in what order did you listen? Uh, in what order did did you listen to Echoes of Extinction ten first or eight first? I listened to it eight first and then ten. I mean, I think you can listen to them either order. Personally, yeah, I suppose um, eight first makes sense in that he's the earlier Doctor, so it's the earlier one from the Doctor's point of view. Yeah, I think the eighth Doctor was side A, so I I think that's why I went for it. Uh, um, yeah, but you can do either. Yeah, I guess it's a bit of a flip flop in that sense. Yeah. Um, big finish. Our physical CDs don't sell, but we also also big finish. Let's re-release some of our stories on vinyl and basically <laughs> charge ninety quid for a a vinyl. Yeah. Um, I suppose it's just you know popularity, really. Like those ones are going to sell well enough, so they might as well. Uh, the Gemma Whelan twist should have been inevitable. Um, come out in the open um, that happened with Rufus Hound in the black hole and Alex McQueen in Unit Dominion. Yeah, that's true. That's true, but I think as well, Dalek Universe seems to be such a popular release. I think that it's only right that people have that same experience what we've had, but we had that surprise. So I think that the longer we can try and keep it shtum, um, the better it is for, for people, really, so they can get the full um, yeah. gut punch, really. Yeah, and with Big Finish as well, it doesn't take them long for them to reuse a character, does it? Like once they introduce them once, they're gonna pop up in quite a few places. Absolutely. Uh, oh, am I the only one who thinks a lot of sixties sci-fi music sounds similar? Uh, yeah, I suppose a lot of them have similar vibes. It's all like that same creepiness, isn't it? I don't. I haven't listened to too much of it, but certainly nothing jumps out as distinctive. I can't really, I haven't really, I mean, 
Star Trek music's very different to Doctor E music. Yeah, they they're a little bit different. Um, yeah, that's the only sixty sci-fi I've seen. Um, do you think you'll do a monthly range tier list in the future? All two hundred and fifty of them. Uh, oh, two hundred and seventy-five. <laughs> oh, oh yeah. Sorry. Yeah, we'll right. we'll be here all night if we do that. We'll have, we'll have to start that early in the day. Yeah. We, we can do one down. for this year's. Oh yeah, that's only you three do your rankings every year, didn't you? Used to. Yeah, I mean, I'd yeah, like to do more fun. of them. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, maybe we could do like a, a monthly range year. Maybe pick a random year of the main range and go right. Let's do a tier list on that. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe. Like, do like all the recent, like ever since Iron Bright when they changed the cover, like yeah. all yeah, go through it by cover. Because certainly, how much of the monthly range have you got? I've got all of the main range. Oh, I don't... <laughs> have you listened no. to all of it though? No, I mean yeah. i I've been toying with the idea of doing a marathon and listening to them, Ooh, all, and then wow. doing and then doing like a video series of basically reviewing like the first twenty five. I don't know. It's a weird idea I've got in my head whether it actually happens oh. and I do it. I don't know, but I think that would be, what, nine parts a video or something like that? Yeah. So be um, a long old 11, 11 parts. 11, 11 parts, yeah. and then I might do a top 10 afterwards, maybe, so 12. Yeah. Um, so that could be a future project <laughs> if I run out yeah, of any yeah. ideas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That's certainly a hefty one. Uh, like uh, The Creeping Death, what historical event uh, many people might not know about. Um, would you like to see David's audios or even Chris audios? Um, historical events. Um, yeah. I don't... Lesser known historical events. That's the other thing. Yeah. I think we've both... This isn't a lesser known one at all, but mm. something like Vietnam or Cuban Missile Crisis or something there. Mm. In like terms, it's more recent history, but it's something that Doctor Who strangely hasn't touched yet. I know like a lot of like American things touch that, but it's strange that Doctor Who hasn't. I mean, I guess the Peterloo Massacre was quite a well. I wouldn't yeah. say lesser known historical thing. I think you know that was a a good story to tell, and I enjoyed that one. Yeah, that's I good. can't. I can't really yeah. think off the top of my head of historical events what haven't been. The problem um, is with lesser known historical events. Is that a lot of them I'm introduced to through Doctor Who? Yeah. <laughs> so all the ones that I could suggest have already been done. Um. Yeah, I'm sure there's some event out there. What would yeah. really, really one will come to mind in about half an hour. We'll be talking about something completely different. I'll just suddenly go, "Oh yes, this." <laughs> it's normally the way. Normally the way. Yeah. Um, will you do a 2020 slash 21 monthly range overview? Um, as there's only three releases, so you might have to round them up. Um, yeah, I would like to do that um, in the near future. I mean, I've got a review end of the beginning before I do the 2021 overview. Yeah. Have you, I think. Thought, have you done a 2020 overview? No, I've not. I've not done oh. that one yet. Actually. Oh, you're um, saving it for so you could include those three. I don't know. I don't know. I I feel like I need to revisit to like some of the beginning stories, like um, Dark Universe and um, Subterfuge, to properly remember them. Really. Yeah. Um, so I might that's re-listen to that. That's a long yeah. while ago now. It just feels like ages ago. So I definitely, definitely want to do that video at some point. Hopefully, you know, listen to all um, thirteen stories and get on with that and do that video. Yeah. I think the other thing there is that it's more than thirteen stories, isn't it? Because mm. a lot of it's like double bills or anthologies. Yeah. Anthologies, so yeah. It's harder to rank in that sense, but uh... yeah, you just got to go for your gut feeling with that, really. Um, I think that's the chat all caught up. Yeah, there we go. Should we dive back into the old tier list then? Yeah, let's go for the Dark Universe 2 review now. Right. Main event. Share I suppose, screen. Well, I suppose the tier list is more the main event, isn't it? <laughs> but, well, yeah, it's it's the main bulk of uh, this. Depends, really. Well, it depends how long this takes. Um, just had a quick question before I go on to the tier list. What early adventure are you most looking forward to? Um, I would say the the secret of debts and monastery i would say um just to see how dodo is personally yeah i think hmm both i'm quite curious about really i think we've got the individual titles for those now have you seen oh, i haven't seen oh, i haven't seen ah, those, no. i'll give 
Uh, I'll give the quick rundown of those. That's a bit of news of sorts. I didn't know this. I see. I don't uh, go too in depth with it all. Uh, so uh, after the Daleks, we have a new life, the balance of power, salvation of the Robo Men, and Susan's choice. Okay. So I, I like those cover um, those uh, titles. Mm -hmm. And then Secrets of Death Sem when it loads in. I remember. We have the abominable snowmen. <laughs> oh, that's original. That's... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know where they that's... come up with that one from. That's a genius title. Yeah. Guru Rinpoche Day. Right. Uh, the Bandits. And okay. the Gunter of Detsen, which we know, obviously, the Doctor has in the abominable snowmen. So That's yeah, probably that when he takes it. That yeah. I think after, I mean, just a little side note, I think after the Daleks... I've kind of had my fill with 60s Dalek stories recently, especially with um, Return to Scarrow. And I feel like after the mm. Daleks just seems like a bit of a rehash of that. I mean, I'm probably judging it too soon because it's not even out yet. But there's just something about that story what doesn't really make me want to listen to it just yet, really. Ah. I think certainly it feels a bit odd with the um, early adventures, how the past three series... I've all had Dalek stories in them. Mm. Plus, the last two series have only been two stories long, so that's half of them being Dalek stories. It feels a bit off, but I say, I'm looking forward to this story. I'm a big Dalek Invasion of Earth fan. I loved Masters of Earth, going back to that. And so I'm looking forward to hearing the aftermath of this now and having quite a different story where Susan is instead you know, left behind. And so we don't have that comfort of, oh, they can leave at the end of the story because this is very much almost more of a spin off in some ways, isn't it? It looks like no doctor here. This is a doctor light. I think that's a story. That's another thing. What sort of put me off it really? Cause, ah. cause Caroline Ford, I'm not the biggest fan of her narration from the companion Chronicles. Mm. Um, so uh, maybe because this is probably a bit more forecast, it might be a bit more bearable. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, we'll see. I mean, maybe that could be a tier list. Early adventures. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we've got a, not too many of those. So. That'd be a, a good little one to do. Yeah, uh, I do I like mean, pop in the chat. Pop in the chat what tier list you'd like to see, because we'll we'll do a few of them. Yeah, I mean, um, Jake or Lightfoot, hopefully somewhere on the horizon. I mean, I think Jake or Lightfoot would be the next one we do, wouldn't it? The yeah, fingers crossed. Fingers Just fingers getting around crossed. to re-listening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right, should we dive into Dalek Universe 2? Yes, let's go for it. Cycle of Destruction. So we've had Anya Kingdom's character piece. Now it's time to find out more about Mark 7 um, mm. as we sort of pick up right from the cliffhanger. Um, now, this was a nice little surprise because I remember us complaining, well, I was wrong to say complain, but we had a little bit of a nitpick with Mark being possessed, going, oh, he's been taken over by the Daleks again, like the Dalek protocol with him going like ALAC. Um, and you think, oh, that's Dalek, isn't it? He's trying to say Dalek. But no, it's the, it's the facility he came from. Um, so I thought that was a nice little little twist within it. Um, hmm. But yeah, it's it's I would, I would say these um, Cycle of Destruction and Trojan Dalek are very much Mark-centred stories, really. Um, yeah, yeah. I think we get um, someone from Mark's past in Trojan Dalek, so. Yeah, I think, because I haven't re-listened to this, I'm just going off my, my first listen of it. Um, I wasn't too keen on it, personally. I think maybe because you look at Trojan Dalek and you think, God, that looks so exciting. It just sort of feels like a bit of a chore to get through Cycle of Destruction. Not that it's a bad story in any means. It's a very enjoyable story. But it's kind of one of those ones where you want to get to the exciting thing. Yeah, especially when it's a, it's the longest one of Dalek Universe. It's an hour and five minutes. And so it's even more to get through yeah. to get to the Trojan Dalek. But uh, yeah, I think it was a, it's nice to see um, Mark's origin story in some ways, getting more of that, uh, more of who he is, really exploring him as a character. There's a lot of nature versus nurture debates in there. And so, yeah, I like the setting as well. It's refreshing. It's a refreshing setting too. But yeah, at the same time, I feel like the middle of the story drags a lot and some of the first half as well. 
it just doesn't have as much going for it for me until you get to the end where you have the twist, you find out what the story's about. And I think I like that. I like the explanation of it and all that's behind it. I just don't, I just didn't enjoy the journey up to that. I think it's clever. I can appreciate what it does, but I didn't enjoy it as much as I feel I should have. Mm, I'd, I'd agree with that. I think there's some nice character moments towards the end about, you know, that the androids can't leave the base or I say sort of deactivate, isn't it? Mm. There's that whole sort of dilemma about Mark leaving and all that. So, yeah, I think that is, it's a good little Mark story um, to expand on. Um, but where are we going to put it? I feel yeah. like it should be in good because I feel like Mez to to me. Yeah, Mez. I don't. I would have. It wouldn't feel right for me putting it next to Time Reaver. It doesn't deserve yeah. that. So I feel like it's it's good. It's a good story. I did enjoy that one. Yeah. One story I definitely did enjoy is the Trojan Dalek, which I have to say is probably my favorite of Dalek Universe so far. I mean, I think Dalek Universe as as a series is. You know, the stories aren't, you know, absolutely amazing 10 out of 10s. They're full of little moments, what makes it so good and exciting. And I yeah, think Trojan especially Dark like is one of those. Character moments and plot twists as well, overall. Yeah, I think I've said to you that for me, Dalek Universe is more than the sum of its parts hmm. as an event, as a series. It has a lot more going for it than maybe each individual episode does. And so I think you get more out of especially once Star Wars Universe 3 is out, it's going to be interesting going through start to finish, getting more out of that as a whole, rather than cherry-picking individual episodes to go back to. Yeah, because there's about, what, seven different arcs going on within there, isn't there? Yeah, there's quite, quite, a, quite a few story arcs thrown in there, so it's quite a rich thematic series in that sense. Mm. Yeah, and also different characters pop up again later on, different themes like Anya's grief and such. It all, yeah, it all sort of plays into each different story, and certain sometimes little things that are introduced in one episode become big things later on. I like we mentioned before with the um, House of Kingdom and Trojan Daleks; they're both two sides of the same coin. With this exploration of how humanity has reacted to the um, Daleks throughout their wars and what they'll do to fight back against them. Yeah, I, I I really like the Daleks within this. Or yeah, yeah but, but it's quite nice. Yeah. It's quite refreshing not to have Nick Briggs voice them. Mm. It was quite it's a nice, little... quite horrific as well. <laughs> yeah, what they do with them. Yeah, it's quite horrific, but it's it's all very enjoyable. I think Tennant gives such a one of his best performances on Big Finish. Actually, I'd say. Oh yeah, especially when he's sort of confronting um, the the person behind the project. Um, it was absolutely brilliant. We we find out where Arborek is. Um, see, my little mm, theory right. was it was to do with Kiza Marinus because of that character, but it's completely different. Completely different. Oh. <laughs> I just thought it sounded similar. So I was like, oh, it's gonna we're gonna get a Tempest Doctor Vaughn story. Yeah, that would tie in with um, Dalek Universe, doesn't it? Like them exploring Terry Nations stuff. Yeah, so I get thought some trolls in there. <laughs> yeah. That'd be lovely, wouldn't it? Uh, I mean, we've yeah, got Mavellan, spoiler yeah. alert: so far, no Vords or Krolls. Damn! But pretty much everything else from Terry Nations showed up in there. Oh, it's brilliant! Absolutely good. Um, what else can you say? But the final five minutes are just heartbreaking. It's a roller coaster, isn't it? Of emotions, it all really that. is. It really uh, is. Uh, yeah, really I mean, I'll get. Again, it's the um. There's a lot of big spoilers here that we don't want to ruin because mm. they are such good moments to experience for yourself. Yeah. I, I think the setting as well is it's just it comes alive in your head. It's one of those ones where mm. you can really picture these battered, worn out Daleks in this sort of run down um, space station. I really I mean, like that. We have the cover to thank for those visuals a lot as well, don't we? Absolutely. It's such a brilliant cover. I mean, we've gushed over it a lot. I gushed over it earlier while you were, um, your internet was having a bit of a fart. Yeah. <laughs> always the way, always the way. Yeah. But gosh, can't wait to have that one in front of me on vinyl. I mean, I've got the, the CD of it, so, you know, it's all very right, cool. there you go. I've not unwrapped it yet, but I'll, I'll do that oh. today. 
I haven't stared at the, the Dalek, Trojan Dalek cover yet. Um, my do you have stream? <laughs> yeah, just it deserves uh, at least, you know, 10 minutes just sat there staring. Oh, noticing all the little different uh, details of like the mutants and all that. Yeah, but oh, yeah. absolutely stellar story. My favorite of um, Dalek Universe so far. Hmm. Yeah, I'd agree. But where to put it? That's the question. Ooh. I definitely think it's between it's Alonzi and Brilliant. Yeah, me. it definitely is. I think. Should we go Alonzi? Should we be kind? Let, yeah, because I think the cover helps it as well. Yeah. <laughs> there we I go. Think, yeah, right, and that's almost sort of like a rep. That's almost a thing of praising Dalek Universe as a whole as well, because it's probably my favorite thing they've done with the Tenth Doctor so far. And mm. so, not to have at least a part of it in Alonzi wouldn't feel right. Especially since we've sort of gassed Dalek Universe up. It was in our top five um, big finish releases so far. So it was sort of feel like an injustice not to, to include it yeah. in the top spot, really. Um, oh, then so we have we've the We've reached the end. The most recent 10th Doctor story. Until uh, October. A, uh, it's a quite a different one. And in some ways it feels almost more 80s for me. I think okay. there's some, certain settings that put me in mind of Warrior's Gate. I can see that. If you know, sort of, yeah. With sort of the, well, I wouldn't say it's abstract, but yeah, I definitely get that feel, really. Yeah. And so you also get like references to um, other things from before the Time War, like the um, what's the Eternals and the Guardians and stuff. Mm. And so that sort of puts me more in mind of 80s as well. I think that this is a, a really good character piece for not only the Tenth Doctor but Anya. I think that there's been a lot of hidden emotion with the Tenth Doctor and Anya because obviously the way yeah. it, I think yeah. if you've listened to the Fourth Doctor series eight, you'll get more of a kick out of this than if you're just going into Dalek Universe just as Dalek Universe. Yeah, it so pays that's... off a lot of stuff from um, earlier as well, like the House of Kingdom. And certainly stuff that we've been building for a while, ever since the um, ending to The Perfect Prisoners. It's stuff we've wanted to hear finally come out, and now we get that in a, quite a heartbreaking way. I think, as well, this story was sort of marketed as the Tenth Doctor is fearful of the lost, you know, that it's going to be like an Omega type situation. And I guess it does have that sort of Omega feel with like the realm of the lost. But I wouldn't say the Tenth Doctor was fearful of the Lost. I think that the Lost more manipulated an emotionally charged and broken Tenth Doctor, really. Yeah. Um, I think that was the only sort of fear factor from that, because you know, the Tenth Doctor is quite sort of broken in a way, that death is following him all over the place. Mm. Um, and you've sort it gets of got into that. some really deep topics. Yeah, so it, it's a very rich character piece, and I guess as well for Anya and um, Mark appearing in there as well. Yeah, I think for me as well, it's a nice little piece going before we go into the epic finale. Mm. We get this sort of um, shift in the relationship, whereas before with Dalek Universe 1 and 2, the way they're all going about together, it's more like a co-worker relationship than a friend's relationship. Yeah, it doesn't feel like, like a, a companion, typical um, companion dynamic, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, especially with this thing that it doesn't really seem like he's going to be taking them with him in TARDIS when he gets back. Like, there's no reference to that. It's more just, let's get me back to the TARDIS. And so with that feel, it's um, quite different there. But I think this is that they're crossing the threshold in there relationship now and becoming more open as friends rather than just being co-workers on this mission to get the doctor back where he belongs yeah because it, it like you said it plays with the themes of house of kingdom about brett and um sarah mm. you know but why did you never mention it and he's like oh i would you know never really thought of it you know i wouldn't have told you about otherwise unless like you're Anne or whatever um yeah you know, that was that was very sort of rich. brilliant lines Really good, sharp dialogue. And I think there is an element of, of tension with this story because obviously the the lost realm is sort of collapsing in on itself and, you know, there's this gateway and only one can pass through. So there is a real element of 
who's going to be st stuck behind, who's going to be, you know, who's going to make it back, you know. So there is that really unpredictable nature because both, you know, the Doctor um, and Anya and Mark can't decide who will go through, really. Yeah, and I think as well, getting on to some flaws with the story because it does have some, unfortunately. So I think after the ending of The Trojan Dalek, it feels wrong how this story begins. Like, not just in terms of the emotional follow-through, because we do eventually get that, but just the urgency of this opening doesn't sit right with me. Like, I don't logically see why it needs to be a rush for the Tenth Doctor in the moment, and having to be quite vague here, as we say about spoilers. But, <laughs> um, yeah, I think that didn't quite work for me. But then we get to slow down, we have some nice character moments before we get into the plot, and I'm actually grateful for that. I think it's nice to have this slower story exploring this world before things really get, we get into the meat. And while Cycle of Destruction had something similar there, I think this story pulls it off much better uh, just because the emotions that are charging through it. And so I, I appreciate it for that. And also towards the end, I think it gets a bit messy with its explanation. And it goes a, a bit Moffat esque, doesn't it, with what happens with the tenth Doctor within it? Yeah, very true. I think it also it feels very very rushed as well. Yeah, I'd say like the last ten minutes, I'd say it definitely just feel like it's zipping all over the place for the sake of it, really, just to make sense of it all to get out of the situation, really. Hmm. And even then, it feels like the moral dilemmas mould on for a bit too long. Mm. Yeah, so I think it's got all the makings of a great story, and it is very good, very enjoyable listen. And again, being part of this whole helps it so much more rather than it just being its own little um, thing in a vacuum. But yeah, it feels like it needed a slight reshuffle, maybe, just like in terms of the length of different um plot points of it just to make it flow better and make a bit more sense have a bit more impact i mean i've got to ask what did you you make of the last scene within the story ah oh, the cliffhanger the cliffhanger I, really, I enjoyed it i really did it was i i didn't expect the story to end where it did um but that last line made the box set even more worth it yeah i'm hyped for where we're going to go in Dark oh, Universe three. I prefer this cliffhanger to the um cliffhanger at the end of volume one. Yeah, because I think we touched on it before, but it's it's sort of the Dalek protocol sort of thing, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's I mean it, was, it paid off differently, but mm. at the same time, as a cliffhanger, it doesn't feel like a box set cliffhanger, whereas this mm. one does. Definitely. Um so that's us six episodes into Dalek Universe, so where is the Lost going to go? Should it be lost in time, or should it go in the, the halls of fame of Big Finish? Uh, what what are you leaning more towards? I want to say brilliant, because I just love the, the character draw. I think that, like yeah. you said, it's, it's better than Cycle of Destruction. Yeah, In definitely. terms of its character stuff, for me. Yeah, I think, yeah, we'll put it brilliant, put it between the two. There we go. So it's a nice little mid-tier of Dalek Universe 2 there. Yeah. There we go. That's our 10th Doctor tier list. Yeah. All wrapped up. All wrapped up. Um, there we go. Oh, no, no. No, no, no. Where did it go again? Uh, uh, yeah, it was good. Oh, uh, sorry. No, sorry no, it slipped. Oh, sorry. Slip. Uh, it's your mouse freezing again. Oh, that's my, that's my mouse got a fault there. There we go. Oh. That is, that's the, the Tenth Doctor tier list. What we make of the Tenth Doctor adventures so far at Big Fish. And I'd say overall, pretty positive, isn't it, really? Yeah, it's very top heavy, isn't it? I didn't, Still only like two below. I thought it would be more mixed, especially like the oh. first few volumes, maybe because you were being kind. Yeah, um, I was giving you quite a bit of leeway there because I knew I'd have to um, get that kindness back eventually. <laughs> You definitely did with Cold Vengeance because <laughs> that story should not be that hard. <laughs> oh. oh, goodness me. Lord. Yeah, I mean, I think we set, we've we both had one story which we wanted to put in. I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but uh, the other, yeah, we both spared them. Yeah, that's our own better judgment, really. Yeah. 
We agreed on Precious Annihilation, though. I think that was one, the one probably... true worst, sadly. Yeah, I mean... But even then, I would give it a second chance. Yeah, I mean, I definitely wouldn't mind revisiting Temp Doctor and River Song, because my memory just feels a bit hazy, even though it's November. I have read us to expiry dating. That's it. That holds up on second list, and that's a good one. I'm glad about that, because that is sheer delight. Um, let's have yeah. a quick look at the chat, then. Yes. Let's see what else we've got. Uh, uh, thoughts on the original cover of Lady Christina, the one people made fun of, so Big Finish changed it to a weaker cover, in my opinion. Also, the same goes for the worlds of Doctor Who, but the new cover was better. Oh, God. Yeah, Lady Christina's a weird one, isn't it? I ended up having quite a few covers because they fixed it so that whatever was going on with her neck was okay. <laughs> And then suddenly they changed it for a quite bland one. And then the next cover that came along for volume two was more in line with like the style of the original first cover. Mm. <laughs> Bizarrely. Yeah. I have no idea why they changed it, to be honest, but no, I don't know. I think the original original deserved um to be hated on. Not yeah. But I think once they cleaned it up a little bit, it was fine. There was nothing wrong with it. Uh, what else we got? Um, I'd say Diary of a Song tier list or a tier list on big finish spin-offs with one or two releases like Jenny, Church, The Churchill Years, Master, um, Tales from New Earth and Don and Noble Kidnapped and Susan War. Uh, That'd be quite interesting, doing like a new series spin-off list maybe. Yeah. I don't know if I've got enough of those. I, d- I, I don't have... Got... None of us have Lady Christina, so... We, I don't have Chir- Churchill. Do you have Churchill? Uh, I have Churchill Volume 1. I don't have Churchill Volume 2. Okay. Um, so I guess we can balance it out, because you don't have Donna Noble kidnapped. I've, you know, So I guess we balance yeah. each other out with the box sets that we, we don't have, really. Yeah, we've both got Susan's War. I think you've got Tales from New Earth. That was free at one point. Was I think Yeah, I got it free got from, well. Do- from Doctor Who Magazine. Um, so, yeah. I haven't listened yeah. to it yet. Nah. I mean, Diary of River Song's always a good option, though. Um, I think. Have you got yeah. all of those? I'm just missing Series 2. I'm hoping ah. that can go on sale soon so I can pick up the final series. Yeah. Um, and then we can do maybe River Song. That'd be quite a cool one. Maybe, yeah. And then we can maybe do tie that Dalek, in with Dalek Universe 3. Yeah. We'll tie it in with um, Series, series nine? 9, New Recruit, because that'll be out that same month. That, yeah, that'd be a good one. Yeah, I think October. Let's try and do River then. That'd be cool. Yeah. Third that'd Doctor cool. Adventures would be nice when um Volume Eight comes out. Rank all of those stories. Yeah, before the the rebrand. So yeah, that'd be yeah. quite cool. Okay. So <laughs> so many options. Yeah, this is for the future of Big Finish fans. Eh? <laughs> or a tier list of all the Master stories, or even your idea of monthly range tier list. Bit um, bit is year for only one year. You have two years per tier. Oh, yeah, two. Yeah, could do two years per tier list. Yeah, that would be good. You know, that would be good. Um, the master one would be quite interesting because most of them are like box sets, really, aren't they? Hmm. Yeah. So, just yeah, the War Master stuff. Oh, we'll get Missy. That's one we haven't. Neither of us have got. No, we don't have Missy. <laughs> Missy. Yeah. I nearly got it when it was on sale, but I I didn't commit. Um. Yeah. So, uh, who do you think the foe long since forgotten mentioned on the synopsis of the gods, God of Phantoms could be? It's probably something original, isn't it? Yeah, I'm le- especially with it being Philip Hinchcliffe. I'm leaning it towards it being original. So, I think with all his like in his era, he was very much in the mood to get away from the Daleks and things like obviously series, um, season twelve. It's a um, what's carnival of the minister in a way yeah like each story um for a while but yeah that was because that was commissioned by terence sticks and barry or no i think robert holmes was involved in that but barry letts was commissioning him as well and so yeah once he got his hands in full control it was only the master mm-hmm. who returned yeah i mean i would like to see a proper like for the pinchliff dalek story yeah, or Cyberman. That'll be 
Yeah, that I think Tombstone would never really suit that era. I, I'm always surprised they never did like a proper. I mean, I guess we did get it in the Fourth Doctor Adventures with um, Return to Telos, but I would love like a proper Fourth Doctor Sideman story with Leela lay into that body horror, almost like a Silver Turk in a way. Mm. Well, tell you, after um, Scourge of the Sideman, I wouldn't mind Fourth Doctor and Sarah. We've oh, got yeah. Sadie now, and like Sarah was the main companion of the Philip Pinchcliffe era, so. Yeah. It would be good to get those two back together for a set like that. Uh, Thoughts on the Third Doctor Adventures Volume 1 and 2 with hindsight on the latter box sets? I think my opi- I think that's probably one of my most drastic changes of opinion, First Doc- oh. uh, Third Doctor Volume 1. Ah, um, you did go back to it in the end then? Cause remember yeah. You about... um, because I, I remember loving that set, maybe because it was the third doctor full cast audios you know we think back that was 2015 and now we're getting mm. you know proper third doc- i'm not saying proper but you know more authentic third doctor stories especially when you look at volume seven yeah. um i think but, it's yeah. similar it's similar for me in the sense that with the similar to the 10th doctor adventures volume one i mean where it feels like it's trying too hard to replicate the year and it doesn't quite work as well as it should and i think is it Havoc of Empire? I don't know why I like that. With the weird eels and... Oh. Yeah. It, it was trying to be Frontier in Space, but it never quite landed as like a new Frontier in Space with sort of a two empires at war and a wedding to try and bring peace. I guess that's a big Game of Thrones as well. well um, <laughs> volume um, 2, though. That's a solid step up. Transcendent, Transcendent of Ephros, yeah. Still one of my favourites. The third doctor i said it's in my top five of of third doctor stories from that range yeah i'd say so i think they're all i think it's a nine out of ten for me i'd agree with that yeah. Look. um and then what was the other story in that set hidden realm hidden that realm, one yeah. i think probably needs to revisit yeah, I remember it expanding Joe's family, but that's all I really remember about it. Yeah. Tell you what I'm looking forward to in Volume 8, though. Getting more... Going back to the third Doctor and Joe on their own. Hmm. That'd be nice. I think, yeah. I think that'd be quite good, because that's be like a throwback to how it was originally when we just had Tim and Katie together. Well, I was, I'm glad we got beyond that and we got the Brigadier back, because you very much need that to open up the whole of the third Doctor's era. And now... With Liz and Sarah, nothing's off limits, but there's something quite quaint looking back at volume two specifically for me. To say it's it's a cozy volume, it's a cozy yeah. listen. I'm I'm sort of in the mood now to go back. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> that next, uh, maybe that can be the next. Maybe that can be the next tier list. <laughs> uh, who knows? So in the mood for it. Um, the Vord must return to big finish. They've had only two stories. One of them isn't thought too highly of people. I mean, Devaina the Vord, excellent. Really good story. Beachhead. Oh, yeah. Beachhead. Yeah, not so We much. didn't rank that very well on the... Uh, well, yeah. ranked it along with the rest <laughs> of Doom Coalition 2 at the bottom, but... Yeah. Certainly, that wasn't too great. It wasn't wasn't a finest hour for the Vord. Uh, mm. Never judge a book by its cover, but always judge a new big finish release by its cover. I'd say, yeah, I mm. guess so. I think we do. We do have sometimes with the main range where mm. a bad cover can lead to a good story. The Law of the Nomad, that was a cover that when I first saw, I was really... <laughs> that was a surprise, yeah. Shocked, but that was, that was almost surprise. as abrasive as The Sixth Doctor's Coat. But listening to it, I really enjoyed it. That's an example of not judging a book by its cover or an I mean, audio by its cover. I mean, sometimes the trailers don't do the stories justice, really. Um, oh, I, think, I think for the most part, the stories don't. And the trailers don't do the stories proper justice, really. Well, it's hard with an audio trailer, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you don't have like that visual grab and appeal, do you? You've just got to go off. Here's a crashing they've spaceship. Been, they've been banging it recently with the video trailers. So, like the temp, um, the um, Dalek Universe two trailer, calling back to that um, 50th anniversary Save trailer. The day, yeah, brilliant stuff. Can't wait to see what I got in store for Dalek Universe 3, the trailer. Oh, it's, that's going to be exciting. That's going to be a good day. 
Oh, what else we got? Did Terry Manoy not mention a while back he wanted to bring um, Quadriga Stion back? I can't. Is that how it's? I haven't listened to Quadriga that one. Stoin. Oh, yeah. Stoin. Stoin. Uh, um, I I don't know. I I feel like Quadriga Stoin's story's done. Um, mm. personally, is there room for like a, maybe a third Doctor one in between? Because I know they did the um first, second, and fourth Doctor, didn't they, with that trilogy? I mean, they could have brought Quadriga Stoin back in. Um, what was it? The Operation Hellfire, because he's Terry Malloy's in that. No. So they could have um could have brought that back, but I just have to see. Really, I guess yeah. Terry Malloy just wants to play something different to Davros. <laughs> well, he still he gets his chance a lot of the time. Yeah, I'd say for the most part. I mean, he even got his chance on TV in um, Attack of the Cybermen, didn't he? Oh yeah, he did. Like the yeah. undercover policeman. Yeah. There we go. Um, I think we can all agree that um, that the day Big Finish bring back the Crotons uh, will be an even bigger announcement than announcing Eccleston was back. I mean, they did a bit. the Crotons. That's a story. Get on it, Big Finish. Crotons and Eccleston. I mean, the Crotons have appeared in um, Return to the Crotons in that weird sort of subscriber specials. Yeah, it was was a subscriber, and I think now you can get it. Um, Yeah, Sick Doctor and Charlie. Yeah, apparently that's quite a good one for exploring that sort of arc that they've got. But it's kind yeah. of one of those quite arc heavy ones in that sense. But it it starts to explore that a bit more. Um so I can see why it, it was a subscriber exclusive then to fill in the gap in the main range, really. Mm. Uh will you ever do a uh, Doctor Who book collection? Um I mean I could do an updated one, but it's not really changed that much since the last one, to be honest. Yeah. You need like a big haul first, don't you? Yeah, oh, well, yeah, I need to buy loads of new new books. Yeah. They don't come out with many new books, sadly. Yeah. No, we've only had one this year, and that was um, The Ruby's Curse, the, the River Song yeah. one, wasn't it? Oh, wasn't that? No, they've came out with that. Um, what is it? Like The Wizard of Oz oh, parody yeah, yeah. and the 10th Doctor and Camelot, Camelot one. Yeah. yeah. It's a bizarre combo, but. I've not picked those up, so I can't comment on them. So, no, yeah. that's a, those are ones that slipped under the radar a bit for me. Um, ben and Luke, rate how handsome the Web of Fear special edition cover is. I think that it's better than the Steelbook. Cover oh, personally. yeah, that and is that's saying a something. Brilliant the cover. The Steelbook cover is normally the the better of the of the animation covers, but this time the Web of Fear and cover. I oh, suppose it's because it's not animation. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's a photo like, cover on the cap. Yeah, it's I think that's always a bit of a shame of the work. animation releases for they don't give you an alternative photo cover. Yeah, yeah. well, they really? can, like what I like about the um, steelbook covers for the animations. I haven't picked any of them up, but from what I've seen of the artwork itself, it's nice how it's not animation, but it's also not the um live action pictures it's something in between it's almost like it's concept art isn't it phase but mm. it looks really good rather than them just using the models and putting them on there we have a fair special edition cover how good um shows how good the dvd range uh would be if it was still around i mean it's still going really isn't it with the animation you can still get yeah uh, you can still get the um web of fear one can't you yeah as like a um, yeah, you could I flip just... the cover and have it be like the classic, um, Doc Two DVDs. See, I've just thought of another tier list. <laughs> oh, what is it? Come on, Anim- animations. Oh yeah, that's true. Maybe after animations. Evil, you could do. Yeah, Would you do like cool. animations in terms of the story quality, or animations in terms of just purely the animation quality? I guess purely animation, really. Yeah, I think that's only fair. Because um, Web of Fear animation, it doesn't deserve to be top tier, does it? No, sadly. Sorry, sorry. Sorry, Web of Fear. I think it's not bottom tier either. I think there have been worse ones. Okay, all right. I don't we know. might disagree we said then. A bit, oh, we said a bit last time how it's got its pluses. I think after Fury, I've just... <laughs> That felt so limited in the um, way it was laid out with the characters. 
like the shots weren't dynamic at all and so at least with this style they're able to not have it just be like characters in a line they're able to have more uh, depth to the shots but yeah when you see their faces it's horrific <laughs> yeah it's, it's pretty terrifying and i've i mean i think in doctor Who magazine they showed a preview of like the yeti and uh <sighs> oh it doesn't it looks rough in the um you can see in the clip there's like that shot of it when they're talking about um it being a mark two oh, thankfully they're not in the episode three as much are they i can't remember to be honest because i kind of I think this might be a bit sacrilege but i kind of skip like the first couple of episodes of web of fear because i'm just i know what you mean with it yeah. Um, uh, yeah but yeah from memory it's quite a yeti light episode i think there's like one comes in and cuts the cable or something and then yeah, it's only really at the end when they attack. Mm. Uh, it's weirdly thin from what I remember. I mean, yeah, they give it um, red glowing eyes, I think, as well. So, Oh, that's an interesting choice. So it's, I guess it's to Not show that it's one. evil. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, nothing shows how good a big finished boxer is when they give the whole thing away for free. That's tales yeah. from the worth. Yeah. Everyone, the most sold big finish release. I mean, they gave away the yeah, they gave away the Devil's Armada for free, didn't they? Oh yeah, and um, that's, farewell, that's great really um, Macedon as well. Yeah, yeah, that's like the majority of that first Doctor box set. Yeah, because it's a six parter, so it's a yeah. good one to get for free. Yeah, but at least with um, those two, it was like ones that were released quite a while back, mm, so rather guess, than. Yeah recent releases like tales of new earth yeah because i was barely a year old when they give that away for free yeah um yeah yeah there's plenty of free big finish on the big finish website big finish podcast you get your free drama tees um so yeah 15 minutes of it always 15 good. minutes of it so it's always good uh what are your thoughts on fear of the daleks i've not listened to that one me neither i'm um, afraid so we can't really give it can't comment on it can't comment on it yeah. um would you two like more first Doctor Stephen and Sarah stories, or do you think Big Finish should leave the TARDIS trio alone now? Um, I think they're in a bit of an awkward place with that because of Gene Marsh's health recently. Oh, that's a shame. Um, because I, I was listening to a Peter Purvis interview that when they were recording some of her audios, but it she sort of was struggling to read the lines. Oh. So Peter had to take like some of the narration over just so it because it was sort of um, putting strain on her. Ah, um, I mean, I love the the Sarah Kingdom audios. I love that Companion Chronicle trilogy, and you know the Sontarans, fantastic. Probably my favourite of series three of the early adventures. Um, and it was just nice to have more stories of Sarah because you know the Dalek Master Plan, though it's epic, it's nice to have a few stories slotted in. Yeah, I love it. It's a good balance there because you have like the quieter, more character focused one, and then you have the more bombastic action one with the Sontarans. What's yeah? Uh, can't quite remember the name of the other one. Um, ordinary life, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, that's another one that deals with like um a lesser known historical event, doesn't it? With like the wind wind rush generation yeah. and yeah. I have to re-listen to that one because I can't really remember it. Uh, um, yeah. I haven't actually got that one. I think I've from series one. I've only got uh, domain of the Vord. Yeah. And series three, I'm missing Age of Endurance and Fifth Traveller. Oh, you're not missing much from the Fifth Traveller, to be honest. No, nah, I've heard that. that's not. <laughs> I think yeah. we weren't very. We were a bit sceptical of that one ever since we saw the cover. Not that it's a bad cover, but that it's a bit of a. Fun. Yeah, and then you've got um, Ravelli Conspiracy. That's brilliant, beautiful. brilliant, brilliant, brilliant one. Yeah, that's my favourite of series three. I say, having listened to half of it. <laughs> Half of series three. I mean, I'd have listened to the whole of the. What are you going to say? I've only listened to half of that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Right. Uh, wasn't it about Zoe's memory and her memories from the walk? Yeah. I, there's a whole sort of. I guess that yeah. uh, fear of the dark starts the whole sort of Zoe trying to regain her memories because Zoe's got quite um, a computer brain, isn't she? She's very like logical and that. 
Yeah, she can um, sort of like see that there are gaps, can't she? She knows that. I think she even runs the tests on herself at one point and finds she's two years older um, than she should be. But I think, uh, I think there's a main there's a main trilogy, you know, focusing with on that the Zoe trilogy. I think it's um, Memory Cheats, Echoes of Grey, and like Uncertainty Principle. I think Second Chances follows yeah, on into that as that's well. Like the final monthly one, isn't it? I wonder if we'll get any more of that in the um, second Doctor Volume Three if we ever get that. If that ever happens, Companion, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like Jekyll it's, and Hyde. Yeah, Companion Chronicles has sort of like been forgotten about a bit, sadly. But yeah, I think for us, or at least certainly for me, Second Chances was coming out just as I was getting into Big Finish with the Companion Chronicles ending, and so it sort of felt like it was more logical for me to jump onto new things like the early adventures rather than go back and get those companion chronicles mm. yeah that's true so, yeah. um goodbye jess thanks for joining um and we'll see you soon goodbye uh, bye bye um what else we got the new animated yeti pics uh in the doc two magazine show how weird and textureless they are yeah they haven't really textured the yeti right um oh, it's the same favorite um overall series of the early adventures well, you've got quite a few gaps Ooh. by the sounds of it. Yeah, um, I can't really judge um, series one and three fairly. Um, I don't. They're all very solid, though. I think I'd say series five. Yeah, I'd say that is a very strong. It's a nice change of pace as well, having it all be the same. Um, what's it called characters? Each story leading into the next. Mm, because you've got a Dalek occupation of winter, which is a fantastic. 60s Dalek story that yeah, is. I really an absolute that, absolute belter, and then Ideal World is very interesting. Yeah, it's a Stephen centric favorite. story, isn't it? Yeah, and I think quite a bleak story as well, and so like quite creepy visuals too. A good mystery there. Um, what's the entanglements? The yeah. weakest, I would say. I didn't. I don't. Hmm. I wouldn't say it's bad. But I'd say it's the weakest of the bunch for me personally. I don't, it's between that and Crash of the UK two hundred one for me. I think both are very solid still. I see. I think Crash of UK that's a really good Vicky story. It's about what yeah. if she didn't join the Doctor, and there's some quite nice sort of parallels between um, you know like the rescue and that sort of thing, really. But it's quite a big chunky story, isn't it? Really. I think a lot of them are, except Entanglement. Yeah, I remember that one being like 40 minutes an episode, really. So it was a big, big old chunky listen, but it, it was a, it was a good one. And it, you know, follows on nicely from... You even get sort of... some nice Peter Cushing film references in a way, don't you? Yeah, you do, yeah. yeah that's, that's always quite... cool. It's a nice touch. Yeah. Um, best, companion cr- uh, best uh Companion Chronicles box set. Um... I'd say First Doctor Adventures of Volume 2, hmm. I'd say, for me. It's either that or First Doctor Volume 1. Okay. Because that's like got the mouthless dead. So that's a really good story. But yeah, hmm, maybe. So I, I quite like... No, I'll go First Doctor Volume 2 as well, actually. Is it like, is it The Fields of Terror? That's a nice little yeah, sequel to Reign of Terror. Then you've got you know, across the darkened city, which is a great two-hander with Stephen and the Dalek. Mm, um, good post-credit scene there as well. Stick around for that. Yeah, that was a good one. Oh yeah, cause I just yeah, it's got a really good origin in there. Yeah, sorry, yeah. Uh, just come back to me. Yeah, bonfire of the vanities. I really listened to that bonfire night last year. Well, that's, that's not a right fitting one. one. Fitting one yeah. to get back. I think um, it's not the best, but it's it's enjoyable. And then, um, is it no, it's not the crumbling magician, that's the next series, it's um, like the, the play is it, one, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the players, isn't it? Something like that, yeah, the, the plague of dreams. I don't know, plague, plague of dreams, of, yeah, plague that's of right, dreams, yeah, yeah, that's a uh, interesting direction to go down. <laughs> First Doctor Time War story, <laughs> yeah, that was certainly something unexpected. Um, Ooh. what else have we got? 
Zoe, Zoe regained some of her memories in a certain monthly range trilogy um, release, lost them in um, a DJ, and then regained them in Companion Chronicles. Um, that's quite a good trilogy for Sick Doctor and Zoe um, and Jamie trilogy. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, best and worst unit in the new series box set. I think we're both oh. missing a couple, aren't we? But yeah, I think you've got more than me together. Yeah, combined, yeah. Uh, well, I've got one to four and seven and eight. And I think I've got, I think, four, then cyber reality. And I've got unit silence, actually. Yeah, I forgot I've got that. Oh. And then revitalization and um, the river song one as well. All right. I think, yeah. Yeah, so you've got five, I've got six. Yeah, I've got five of them. Oh, so none of us have got um, five then, the encounters. No. Right. The anthology. Yeah. So I think that sets up some of the stuff in cyber reality, doesn't it? Yeah, with um, the sort of company, what feature of... Well, not it's not a company, but... Yeah, the, it's the black the market thing. people. Yeah, yeah, that's it. That's yeah, it. They have a name, but I can't remember what it is. Yeah, I can't remember either. Um I think my least favourite is probably Unit Assembled, which pains me to say it as a massive oh, hmm. fan. Silurians howling like dogs. No, thank you. Yeah, um, I'd say that. I mean, that one put me off getting five and six, to be fair. So, yeah. So yeah, I'd put that one as the weakest. I'd say that's probably... I think my favourite one... Um, I think probably Cyber Reality. I think that was quite a cool one. Um. But yeah, it's not a range I'm I'm too overly fond of, really. I, I sort of cherry yeah. pick it. I mean, I would like to get Extinction just to, you know, get some Autons. Yeah, I think that's a very good one, but I don't, I'm not sure what my favourite would be. It might be Extinction. So it's Shutdown's another good one, and Revisitations is also great. So, yeah, there we go. Between three. <laughs> Um, what else have we got then? Uh, yeah, it seems there's quite a big discussion about Zoe's memory. Zoe's memory, yeah. yeah. Um, and there's a comic book. I mean, I think, I think it's the World Shapers. Jamie gets his memory back, and that's a quite an interesting Cyberman story. No, um, that's Sick Doctor again, isn't it? Yeah, Sick Doctor and, and they're Perry. like pairing those two up, I suppose, yeah. because they're two doctors. I guess, yeah, it makes sense. Three. It does make sense that one. Yeah, uh, I wonder if they're going to bring him back for uh, Beyond War games. I mean, it'd be interesting if Fraser Hines playing the second doctor. That's the, the big question. Yeah. Isn't it? I the think big I'm question. torn because for me, it always feels wrong when it's. The second Doctor without Jamie, but at the same yeah. time, I'm not sure how I feel about them bringing him back immediately after having his memory wiped. Yeah. Um, Who knows? Ben, you said sometimes a trailer cannot sell a box set um, that well. Is the second Doctor Companion Chronicle set to not the opposite? A fantastic trailer, but supposedly an okay box set. That, I think that's that probably is one of the best trailers. Yeah, that is a that is a really nice trailer, but it's just a shame the box isn't that great. Yeah, I suppose it helps that um, with that it's a specially recorded trailer. Yeah, that is true. And yeah, especially designed like the Eccleston trailer. Yeah. They did a specially recorded one for Volume 1 as well, actually, where it's like Fraser Hines doing that sit-down from Web of Fear, but a little bit different. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah. Like the Web of Fear. Um, what else we got? Is there not a third Big Finish Ford story? It's called Spare Parts. Yes, that is the third Ford story. The first ever Big Finish Ford story is Spare Parts. Um, <laughs> Right, I think that's the, the chat all caught up. So if you've got any um, last questions before we wrap it all up for this evening and then we'll return, um, hopefully next week for another instalment of uh, yeah. 
Jag on Lightfoot at last, perhaps. Jag on Lightfoot, hopefully. I mean, I don't think there's anything coming out this week. What could be coming out, maybe? Uh, uh, no, nah, it's all July this week still. All I right, think, but... okay, oh, we're safe. Yeah, Torchwood will be, but I don't think either of us are picking up that. No, I, don't, I can't remember which Torch... Is it the... Uh, oh. It's the Soho one, Madam I. Ah, okay. With, um, what's his name? Adam back. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, I'm not going to pick that one up. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, I'm slightly tempted, but I won't, won't be in a rush to listen. I did really enjoy Tortured Soho, mm-hmm. um, the box set, but this story just doesn't intrigue me. Yeah, the Tortured stuff's kind of, if it interests me, I'll get it. I'm not in a particular rush to, to get the Tortured stuff, to be honest. Yeah, I think they're in an awkward spot at the moment, aren't they? With yeah, and I Bond think Batman. that sort of sort of tainted my sort of love of um, the tortured stuff. Really, it's like, what do I do? Do I listen to it? Can I? Because it's that sort of awkward thing. Can you enjoy the art and you know separate the art and the artist? Really, I don't. Yeah, know. I uh, I did put on um, uh, what's it? the Cyberman two part? The Rise of the Cyberman Age of Steel. Obviously, not Barrowman. That's Noel Clark, Clark, which is even yeah. worse. So. Yeah, that was sort of like a bit of a uh, yeah. tough one, like having a childhood hero like that. Mm. Um, but yeah, obviously, um, much worse for the woman involved, which, I mean, we won't get too much into that. Yeah. Uh, but Absolutely. yeah, because our voice is not the one to listen to on this topic. But yeah, just in terms of revisiting that in the context of that, I think I still enjoyed the story. I'm able to separate the art from the artist. And but it is important to, like, yeah, recognize a thin it. line there, yeah, and recognize why it's not right to continue the support there and continue putting out these stories. Uh, but yeah, especially John Barrowman just seems to really be putting his foot in it at the moment and <sighs> half assing apologies and then just saying things that make it all worse. Yeah, but. Who knows? Yeah, because yeah, I feel like we should have got an announcement about something for the 50th by now. Yeah, because that's October, so I, I feel like they're really in a in a sticky place is big finish. Yeah. 15th, not 50th, sorry. Um, 15th especially... anniversary, I mean, of the show as a whole in October. Especially with, um, you know, absent friends being pulled, whether that will see the light of day. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know. Yeah, it's interesting with the recent stuff, how it's all, like, after the 50th release, or, well, the 49th, I suppose, mm. we've sort of drifted into this more worlds of tortured thing. Like, we've got a um, what's Yvonne Hartman story, followed by Tortured Soho. Then we're going off into the future. Then we're getting another one with um, Phyllis Major. I think it's it Major. That just sound quite an interesting one. Yeah, I'm curious about that. Oh, yeah, Billis Manager. So, yeah, it'd be interesting if we get any of the um, main cast back anytime soon or if we've drifted off to um, a bit something a bit different for a while. Yeah, because I think um, Gareth David Lloyd's recorded some more stuff, so I guess we'll have to uh-huh. wait and see. Unless that's like yeah. Tortured One, maybe. Yeah, could be. But, yeah, we um, haven't had a box set in a while. Yeah. No. Our last torture box set was the um, Tortured Soho, I think. Yeah, that was um, August last year, wasn't it? Yeah, so they've certainly cooled down with those a bit. Which... I, mean, I mean, Tortured Soho will probably get another box set because that seemed to go down very well. Hmm. Be interested to maybe get a box set set between series one and two without Jack. Uh, maybe, yeah. Have the whole, like, the main four of them without him. Maybe that could be the the fifteen year anniversary story. Yeah, just a real big middle finger to John Barrowman. Um, speaking of the torture, are you interested in getting the captain from the Impossible Planet story? That does appeal to me actually because it's something different. So yeah, and I mean we both love a good bit of Impossible Planet and Saint Pit, don't we? Yeah, I mean I, I think it's one of those ones. If I've got the money spare, I might chuck it that way and get it. <laughs> but August. Not right now, too expensive. August is a busy month. Yeah. Early Adventures, Fourth Doctor, Ninth Doctor as well. Yeah. So much. 
And then September is another busy month. It's it's yeah. nonstop, but it's good. <laughs> yeah. What do you think we're gonna get first? Oh, um, maybe Ninth Doctor. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I think not, because that's sort of the one they pushed the most first. I mean, what what day is Ninth of August on? Uh, hmm. That's on a month now. They're not going to do it on a uh, Monday, are they? I mean, they so, could do, maybe. They could. They could. There's more chance of it on a Monday than a weekend. That is true. But I think Wednesday is probably most likely. But yeah, I suppose, it might be Warmaster, actually, because that's been in the can for a long while. Oh, yeah. I, I think early ventures, they might just whack them out, just go, there, they're done. Yeah. Oh, you want to yeah, to celebrate Jackie Lane, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Um, thoughts on six and Charlie arc favorite story from the arc. Um, I've not re really listened to all of it, so I can't really comment on it. But I think probably my favorite is the last story, Blue Forgotten Planet. I think that was quite a good one by Nick Briggs. Um, I think, but I've I've not really listened to much of the six and Charlie stuff. I'd like to I rectify that. Yeah, I haven't listened to any of it except for the red. Um, is it Red House? Yeah, yeah, for the, the last, last adventure. adventure. Uh, and I wasn't a big fan of that one, but I suppose that has to be my favourite Six and Charlie story <laughs> by uh, default. I did enjoy The Condemned. That was a, a good opener to the, to the series. Nah. Um, what else we got? Would you like to see a Six and Evelyn audio novel? I think that'd be quite nice, get Colin Baker to read it. Uh, oh, yeah, cool. that'd be good. Yeah, would be quite a nice little thing to do. It'd be even a to see Colin write a novel. Yeah, get him to write an Evelyn story. Colin Baker writing that. Yeah, that'd be a yeah, be a nice way to feature the character again and have a bit of a tribute to her. That'd be quite nice, wouldn't it? Really. Um, it's all a shame she wasn't in the last adventure, really, because I think that would have been a lovely, lovely thing to mm. have. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Most anticipated upcoming fourth Doctor series because they announced them in advance, don't they? We've I mean, three. I think it's got to be series 13, fourth Doctor and Sea Devils. Sign yeah, please. Yeah, I've um, already seen some for series 13. Yeah, for me, series 13 for that. They're all looking pretty good. I think fourth Doctor's been um, picking up speed a bit recently. Yeah, I mean, fourth Doctor and Weeping Angels, that'll be exciting. Oh, yeah. Get a bit of gothic horrorness in your life. Tom Baker Batcher on loose for a series. Oh, I might listen to um, Night of the Vash Narada again, just to just to have that. Oh, yes. Because that's a, that's a good one. Um, it's a shame we've got to wait till March now. It, feel... it already it? feels like we've gone a long time without Fourth Doctor, even though it's only been since April. I mean, luckily we've got the, the Philip Pinchcliffe Presents um, story. Yeah. So. It wouldn't surprise me if something else snuck in the middle. Yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they do like a little special, like a lockdown special, maybe if we go back into lockdown, which is always fingers a crossed we don't, but yeah, it's, you never it's know. a possibility. Yeah, uh, at this point, um, get your jab, kids. <laughs> <laughs> we have, yeah. Um, uh, what else we got? According to a strip, Jamie was taught mind trick by the second doctor, which allowed him to retain his memories. Of traveling with the doctor despite attempt to erase him in the war games. Okay. Um, remember the Virons because Big Finish don't seem to. Yeah, they used to, they were quite a big thing for Big Finish until the Eminence came along, really. And then the Eminence was quite a big thing for Big Finish until the Eleven came along. <laughs> yeah, and then the Eleven's now become the Twelve, but the Twelve's become forgotten, <laughs> and it's yeah. gone back to the Eleven. Yeah. Well, I assume we might get more of her in further time wars, maybe alongside uh, John Jonathan Carley. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, uh, would you like to get the Charlie spin off? Uh, nah. What about you? Uh, I mean, if they do a McGann set with Charlie. Oh, yeah. Because I think that was the original plan for series three of Charlotte Pollard. Then I'll probably pick it up because McGann. Um, but I'm, I'm in no rush to get the Charlie stuff. As much as I like Charlie. I don't really think I could listen to a spin-off of it personally. I think also it's just one of those things with Big Finish where there's so much out there, so much to buy. The things that yeah. you can justify cutting off, you do. 
Yeah, because you, you've you've got to make your sacrifices now. Going, do I want to listen to that? Am I invested in that? And I think as well, you know, doing doing these as well. I'm like, can we do a stream on it? Can we do a video on it? It's that sort of thing, really. Can we can we justify it? Justify spending yeah. the money, really. <laughs> um, so yeah. I think that's a good excuse of buying big finish. So you know, we can talk about it here. So it sort of makes us feel less bad. <laughs> yeah. I think um, speaking of like, that's it. It's not a monster big finish necessarily forgot, but forgetting them is part of their appeal. Mm. The silence. Oh yeah. Big finish haven't done anything with them since unit silence, I don't think. I see a... I would like to see the silence come back, actually. I think yeah. they're they're a good 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 one, really. Yeah, they're one of Moffat's great creations, aren't they? And yeah, there's got there's more you can do it there. Maybe even in Paternoster gang or something that could work. Mm, maybe yeah i'm trying to think a oh, fourth doctor silent story would be nice yeah or fifth doctor maybe it'd be interesting know. seeing fourth doctor and romana and like romana two and the silence mm. just because it's all, i'm just thinking obviously they're based off that um the scream image, yeah yeah uh, painting and so <laughs> i don't know fourth doctor and romana and art just seems to go together, don't they, with City of Death, along with some other of their own audio stories. It just it seems like a good fit. I just thought the Seventh Doctor in the Silence would be a good little yeah. fit, actually. It'd be a very good fit. Yeah, um, Favourite Lucy in eight series? Uh, I'd say Series 4, personally. Mm. So that's my favourite. Actually, yeah. actually, I'm surprised we haven't had the Silence in a River Song box set. Sorry, just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, they, yeah, they weren't in Volume Three, were they? Yeah, or were they? Or we forgot. Oh, yeah, because certainly that was about the um silence religion, but not about the monsters themselves. Well, it was the all um, demons Kibari. run. Yeah, it was all demons run. That. Yeah, but so yeah. Sorry, what were you saying before I? Um, favorite uh, Lucy and Eighth Doctor series. Um, I think series four, just because of that ending, uh, uh... such a gut punch, and you've got the the wonderful Ice Warrior. Two-parter, I love that one. And then you've got the nice comedy story of um, uh, Situation Vacant and then sort of the gut punch that is Death in Blackpool as well. That's quite a depressing... Oh, yeah. um, I mean, there's quite a few gut punches that series, isn't there? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. God, that's nearly 10 years old now. I mean, I didn't get it when it was uh, first out, so I don't feel the, the old <laughs> as yeah. old yet. That would have been a fun one to like keep up with at the time. Oh yeah, that would have been such a, an exciting thing. Um, but yeah, we weren't doing big finish fans back then. No, YouTube uh, wasn't really kicking off as much back then. No, no, not wow. really. No, it's weird thinking how old some of those are. Like two thousand and eight, wasn't it? Yes, two thousand and seven, and yeah, two thousand and seven. Oh, yeah. Oh wow. And then Dark Eyes is 10 years old next year. That's just a mental thought. Mm. But luckily, to, I mean, it's not even nine years old yet, luckily. We're not too old just yet. <sighs> That's a scary thought, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, do you know what happened with Gallifrey behind the scenes that led to a failed reboot with Juliet Landau that then reverted right back to Lala Ward and tried to ignore Intervention Earth? <laughs> Wasn't it Lala Ward was a bit upset about them just getting rid of her? I think, was it? I mean, I think I heard that there was something about that. They had the poster where it went out with the old and with the new. <laughs> and oh, she, okay. understandably, wasn't best split. But I think also it's partly down to the BBC as well. I think they weren't too happy with them introducing a new Romana. so they Because mm. they then later had that thing with the um, Doctor Who exhibition, didn't they? Where we had oh, yeah. Romana played by Lala Ward during the Time War. Yeah. I mean, so, unless... I think they could possibly bring back Juliet Landau now. I think the the dust is settled within it now. So. I think they've been allowed to do a lot more um, stuff there as well, haven't they? It's a, like with um, new incarnations of the Master and the Monk. Yeah, so I, so I can't I think... see the problem now. I think. Yeah. Although I don't know, maybe Lala Ward still wouldn't be very happy. I mean, so imagine at that mom. time they'd have got her with the fourth Doctor, wouldn't they? So they thought, okay, that's good enough. We've got her here. She's busy but, though, it's fine. Yeah, she's still working for us, so it's not like we're cutting her out of a job. We're just exploring new things, but nope. Um, but yeah, yeah, I think I had... 
I'm still happy with Lala Ward as R- Romana going forward. It's a difficult yeah. one, isn't it? Because with on TV, you regenerate the character when um, the actor no longer wants to be a part of it, unless it's Colin Baker or Sylvester McCoy, <laughs> sadly. But you know, the precedent there is yeah. when the a- it's the actor who decides when to leave the character behind, not the. Um, it's not dictated by the producers, writers, and the story necessarily. Whereas with um, Big Finish, the whole idea there is once they're done with TV, that's where they go to live on. It's it's and a top so, graveyard, isn't it, Big Finish? <laughs> yeah, and so it's a bit difficult to regenerate a character there when yeah. they still want the actor still wants to carry on with it. All right, we've got one last question, and then we can we can call yeah. it a night. I think the stylish um, one has himself said, "Final question." There we go. <laughs> final just, question. I know he means it's his final question, but he's decided it's everyone's final question. Uh, right, uh, worst Doctor book you've read? Um, oh gosh, where's my least favorite Doctor book? I haven't read that many, to be fair. A lot um, of them. It was quite a while ago, so I can't. I'd say. Maybe rags. That's that's a horrible book. Oh, yeah, that one I've heard is a bit that's infamous pretty, for that. Pretty horrible. I don't um, know. I feel like for me, unlike with audios and TV, if it's a horrible book, I just won't get through it. <laughs> I'll just like stop a couple of chapters in, and so it's harder. I can't really say that's the worst book then because I haven't finished it, and so it's unfair to that in that sense. But at the same time, it wasn't able to keep me engaged enough to want to finish it i mean that's the thing if you're reading a horrible book why waste your life reading something you're not enjoying you know yeah um, like at least with audio or tv you know it's not too long yeah. wasting yeah and oftentimes you're sat there experiencing it anyway you might as well finish it off yeah, yeah book that's something you put down you come back to or at least for me i'm very much someone who takes their time with books i know mm. i've got friends who can read a book back front to back in an afternoon <laughs> see that's one Magic. superpower i would love yeah i just, just love like that. be the doctor just flick through yeah. it and done in a second because then it's like oh i can justify buying these books that i'm probably never gonna read <laughs> yeah that's yeah um, i do wish i was more like that and could just go for it but uh, I think, I mean, i've got yeah. audio novels now <laughs> there we go <laughs> it's a nice in between um uh, yeah, I think we are all done now. I think that's all yeah. the questions. So thank you very much, everyone, uh, for joining this uh, good old long stream, three hours and you know twelve minutes almost. So we've we've wow. beat the eighth doctor one, but we've we've had a lot to talk about series thirteen and just general chit chat. It's always been lovely speaking to you guys in the chat. It's always a pleasure. Yeah. Always some good questions today. Good, good questions yeah. going there. Yeah, it's always nice. It's always good to have like a, a good old active chat because it makes us feel like we're doing something right and yeah, it's not just us talking in an empty space. It's a vacuum. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully people are, are listening and enjoying what we're saying. Um mm-hmm. but yeah, we'll see you next time for possibly Jago and Lightfoot. Possibly. Yeah. Lightfoot. I think we've said that the last few times, maybe yeah. I don't know. But other things have happened or you've had an idea going, let's do that. Yeah. I mean Dalek um, Universe two came out, didn't it? So we yeah. need to give that a listen but now i'm all caught up more well i've got war doctor to finish but that shouldn't take too long so nothing's news coming out next week hopefully should have the free time to stick jago and lightfoot on have we revealed what series we're doing yet no i haven't revealed what one yet ah, do you, you want to reveal uh, you, no, you can you... reveal it if you want uh, well it's two in a one and a half we are going to hmm. be going for a bit of a lighter more fun Jago and Lightfoot with Jago and Lightfoot and Strax, a classic. And then we're also going to have a bit of a discussion about Series 12, a bit more of a darker one, but one that I think we both feel it sums up Jago and Lightfoot as a whole, doesn't it, in a way? Mm, yeah. It's, it's yeah, it's quintessential yeah. Jago and Lightfoot, I would say. Yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting some, back into some Jago and Lightfoot. Yeah, I've definitely so, been in the mood for it. Yeah, and we'll also tier list the other um 12 series and a little extras as well so little bonus ones there yeah um maybe even but, throw in the 
uh, what are they, Fourth Doctor ones? Who knows? Yeah, yeah, that would be a nice one to do. Yeah. Uh, um, and I'll be back for a stream in a couple of days' time. I think Wednesday the twenty eighth because it's my ten year anniversary on YouTube. Oh, wow. Um, so I feel incredibly old. So I thought yes. I'd do a little live stream Q and A um, to celebrate that. So if you if you're around then, then please do stick around and be great to have a little Q and A and have a little chat about whatever really. Um, so that'd be pretty cool. Oh, it's crazy how long that's been. Yeah, it's been crazy, and then yeah, big yeah. finish fans yeah. is what six years old, six, five, seven years old, isn't it? Yeah, yeah might seven be. years old. So yeah, Ooh, maybe God. do like an anniversary special for that when it gets <laughs> to ten years. Um, but yeah, Ward yeah. up to tears. How long has your channel been going like as it is? Because it's as like it... sometimes we start channels and as it is, yeah. So like Doctor Who reviews and such. As in Doctor, I think my my channel started out um, doing figure reviews. Ah, oh, yeah. And then I started branching out with DVDs, and then that was sort of my channel for 2011, 2013, and then 2014, Big Finish happened. Hmm. And sort of ever since. That's when yeah. figures died off a bit, wasn't it? Yeah. And like the but DVD now line. Back in course. Yeah, the DVD line finished, so I wanted something else to get, and big finish was that. And now, yeah. yeah, now we're in crippling debt. Now we're in crippling debt, but you know it's lovely because we get to talk to you and have a opinion, have opinions, yeah. um, and talk all things big finish. So yeah, that's all lovely stuff. As um, um Kameka said in the Aztecs, um, what is it? Better to starve than grow hungry for beauty. Yeah, that's true. Or something like that. Yeah, I something along the, the lines. Quote, but I got the but, spirit. There we go. The spirit of an adventure. War Doctor Tearless in 2023. Yeah, that'd be a good one to do, maybe. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I think that is us all wrapped up. So thank you for everyone for joining us. Um, if you stuck around from the beginning, thank you for just listening to us ramble on about whatever, really. Yeah. Uh, We've done the good old tier list, Dalek Universe. Uh, it's been a fun old Sunday evening. Um, so mm. have a good week, everyone, and we'll see you very soon for more Big Finish fans. So thank you very much, Luke, for joining me. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure, and we'll see you next time. So take care, everyone, and uh, we'll see you later.